right, we are live for this month's Cartoonist Kayfabe Ringside Seats Comic Symposium. Welcome everyone to the symposium uh, triangle where we are live for battle with our first guest, Dave Howlett. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, Eli? Pretty good, pretty good. Before we get into all that, I just want to introduce the other four co-hosts of tonight's um, uh, symposium. Uh, to my left, we have Ray Carcases. How's it going, Ray? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I've got it now. No, man, I know. Uh, to my right, we've got uh, Craig CK. What up, Craig? How's it going, homie? Everything right. good? Everything's great. Everything's great. And uh, to my other side, we've got Rick Lopez. So we're going to get some quick uh, host plugs out of the way. So, Rick, what you got going on, man? Um, I'm still pushing issue two of my book, The Power. Uh, it's right. a four issue miniseries about a boy creating his own comic and he comes to find a realm beyond space and time within his own mind. So it's kind of just that whole creation process and how everything around you kind of disappears and you go to a whole other uh, realm altogether. I have those up on my big cartel. I still have a bunch of the, I still have a bunch of each issue, but um, with each one, I also give out these mini comics of my strip cosmic cat that I do on next to panel press with Eli Craig CK and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, we, we're about to put out our uh, newest update this weekend on Sunday. So that's really exciting, but I got the first seven strips in here that are included and I'm on 17 now. So it's a little less than halfway, but um, yeah, catch me on Instagram at doom days and uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook at next panel press. Oh yeah. Thanks, Rick. All right. What you got going on, Craig? Same old stuff uh, in the middle of uh, Liefeld stuff with uh, David Browers. He is slowly catching up to me. So we are just about ready, I think. I'm hoping by uh, end of December, December, um, finishing up some wizard stuff for you. Oh yeah. Uh, and next panel press. I think that's it. Anything else I can't fucking remember right now. So <laughs> All right. like a motherfucker that's it <laughs> hell yeah gotta stay busy that's it all right ray what you up to bud um continue with my uh review videos i'll have one up this weekend um and also i'm just continuing my sub stack just oh, trying yeah. to keep that short and sweet it's good that's good stuff too everyone should check that <laughs> shit out thank you i mean i've never done a newsletter and like i'm trying to like i don't want to write a, a comics journal thesis <laughs> everybody's busy the thing is everybody's busy if you have time to read that or that, that's great but not everybody does that's true yeah you got to get just like something quick to the point in there get it going yeah cool man i'll throw a quick plug in myself um i got the uh my grendel podcast grendel the devil in detail we just released our grendel zine love and grendels there's only about two left and uh, the only way to get one is to listen to the podcast, number one, and then uh, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Share it with me. Email me at Eli at CosmicLionProductions.com, and we'll get you one of the last couple out of here. They look pretty great. And um, as always, Wizard 2 is coming along fast and furious. I'm almost done. I'm getting it going. There's almost 400 pages left. Rick's got his love and grendels. Yeah, I think we're almost at 400 uh, pages. I'm going to use a lot thinner uh, sheets so if you got to add dave's got to add in there almost everyone in here i feel like's got something in there so that's that's killer all right y'all um that's it for me then let's get into our first guest here dave howlett and uh, we've got an intro from craig what up craig oh so this is dave howlett uh i came across dave via jason lapidus because of uh his book the makers uh i guess jason probably came across dave through um the comic book store uh what's the comic book store again dave strange strange effects strange right adventures. i'm sorry strange adventures strange adventures that's it yeah and halifax um ed and jim did a a spot out there i think right with you guys and uh um not yeah. recently <laughs> um not a lot of spots happen oh you mean uh like an appearance or yeah, yeah. Did, hey, didn't it didn't you guys get them down there wasn't that the idea originally <laughs> I think we probably did a couple years ago. Yeah, it was like three years ago, I think. That's yeah. Cool. Before the world stopped, right? Yeah, so. time has kind of lost all meaning these days, you know? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, uh, his book is excellent. I love it. Uh, I've got, uh, I have to order the rest of the issues. I've got the first issue. Uh, the story's great. Um, but yeah, have at it. All right, Dave, I guess I'll take the first question. Um, it seems like your book, The Makers, is obviously it highlights something that we all love, which is like 90s comics. It's these creators. It's the image uh, creators boom. And it's almost kind of like, I'm sure that this is your thing that you know you use to pitch it, but it's very much like Galaxy Quest kind of meets the image creator. So how did that um, idea come to you? And, you know, how did you how did you find this story in your in your head? Uh, well, originally I was going to just do like a straight up fictional bio of like an image comic style imprint. And then I thought, I don't know, it might be fun to draw something kind of crazy and get just get weird and science fiction -y with it. So I thought I'm going to try to meld it to some other concept and try to say something larger about creation and creators and you know that kind of pretentious bullshit <laughs> <laughs> right well i mean it, it doesn't come off as pretentious at all it comes off as like super fun and something that like i think a lot of people would, would want to check out so um how how has it been like how are you getting the word out there without like cons and stuff in, in the, the age of covid uh, mostly through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the usual sources. Uh, there's probably a few, I don't know, maybe I should be on TikTok or comic people using that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but also like working in a comic shop, I kind of have that in my advantage too. I can, uh, uh, nice. Yeah. You know, we promoted through there. Like the whole thing coming to print is really because, uh, my employer, the owner of Strange Adventures really wanted to, uh, Callum Johnston, he wanted to, uh, invest in a comic basically. So he said, do you want to go to print with these? And so if it wasn't for him, it would still be really? digital. Yeah, and it's even on the uh, the like nice newsprint. You know, I know I reached out to you and I was like, "Where'd you get this? It's amazing!" Like that was like your initial idea. You're like, "It's got to be on newsprint." Um, it wasn't initially, but it's something Cal always pushed for because we try to get stuff done, you know, fairly regularly through a local printing house. And uh, you know, we're of the similar generation where we like newsprint. It's just kind of I don't know. I the slick stuff maybe works better as an image comics allegory, but. Uh, the yeah. 70s 80s kid in me also really loves the feel of newsprint so yeah I have to do that um do, do you think that uh you know in a type of collaborative video like this it's like a collab vid it's like a covid do you think we should call them that or no <laughs> i don't know uh i think you're gonna get some health warnings popping up if you do <laughs> yeah i don't think that's a good name for this type of thing i just thought i'd run it by you uh yeah. craig rick uh ray who's next I can go. Yeah, I got a. I know. I know. I've hit you up about about the book um, on on message and stuff about paper, and you've been really uh, forthcoming and and nice. Um, are you going to continue the series? Like, are you going to keep it going, or is it going to have like a kind of like a four to six issue arc, and then kind of rest out? Or are you going to? Uh, it's six issues. Um, six I don't have the the attention span to do anything much longer than that. At least not yet. So it's that's plotted. I'm actually drawing the sixth issue now. So it's. Uh, coming to its conclusion pretty soon well any plans afterwards like any ideas what you're going to move on to next uh, i got a couple i haven't really decided one is kind of like a horror slasher movie kind of thing but it would be very short and not playing around with the different experimentation as much as i have been with the makers i want to do something very short and simple next to kind of take a breather palate cleanser then maybe do something a little bigger is that indicative of uh of all, all the all the movies you've been watching lately that I've been seeing, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's definitely I've had horror movies on the brain for sure. So yeah, the time of year I guess. Eh? Yeah. So when do you think you'll be done issue six? God, I would love to say by the end of the year, but we'll see. You know, like I, I should have had the whole thing done by now, but as we all know, it's uh, been a very distracting time, so it's not always as easy to get lost in the creative process that we ought to be. So. And the other, I know the first issue is written, but you have the other issues in print now too? Like uh, Issue two print. is in print now. Uh, print now. And three, we're hoping to have three done by the end of the year. So. Any uh, any supply chain issues with that? No, no, because uh, it's actually done in a place that's just outside the city here. So we just get it couriered in when it's done. It's pretty easy. And then yeah. the rest of us distributing it through the mail. So Yeah, no, I was just wondering, like, I, I keep seeing these articles pop up this week of like, you know, people are running out of paper and shit. I was wondering if... Uh, Oh, yeah. you guys had had any of that or 
Uh, not yet, but now that you say it, you're making me think we probably will. <laughs> it does seem to be a real thing. So yeah, that's probably in the cards somewhere. That's great. I fucking jinxed everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, no doubt. That's great. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, go ahead. Who's next? Go for it, Rick. My turn. Okay. <clears throat> Question number one. Right. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, so like I'm I'm st I'm still pretty new to your stuff. I don't I don't have makers quite yet, but um <laughs> like as I as I've seen a lot of a lot of your work, I'm never sure what's digital and what's traditional, and I'm like a little I'm curious about your process because like if like there's certain times where I'm like maybe this is digital because but if it is digital like it's so like that's so good because I always have um. I, I stick with traditional like inks and for the reason like to keep the like that human touch on it and whether you're if you're using like digital inks for some of these pieces it's like it's it, I can't tell you know and that's I'm just curious about your process basically well I'm really glad to hear that uh thank you because yeah like uh, I always feel like the digital stuff looks super digital to me <laughs> whereas the other stuff I can usually tell uh the it's all pen and ink like traditional pen and ink the line art but then the lettering and the colors, at least in the comics I do right now are digital, but a lot of the other stuff you'll see just on my Instagram or whatever is sometimes it's just markers, sometimes it's colored pencils. I kind of want to get away from digital more and more going forward and try to go with more traditional stuff, maybe work some Photoshop in, but that seems to be the direction I'm headed in. So we'll see where that goes. Why do you want to cut out digital? Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm right now just the frame of mind. I mean, I'm liking the organic look of like a marker or a colored pencil more. Like I do like the idea of integrating the two of them. I think that's one that that's something that somebody like Michelle Fife seemingly does. I can't really quite back engineer his style, but like, I'd love to know how he does it. Um, but I do there was think a couple of your on it. There was a couple of your pieces where he, he immediately did come to mind though. Like I will say well, that he's a big influence these days. Like he's pretty much my favorite guy right now. So I think mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I'm not trying to copy his style, but I'm trying to no, learn no, no. from it. Of and course. To it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, just like more and more, the more I look at at least my own use of digital, maybe that needs to get different, but like, I, I want to switch over to hand lettering sooner rather than later. I think once the makers is done, I want to go full hand lettering because I find I can always tell font when I see it, even if it's one that is based on an artist, I just, like the look of hand lettering better. There's more opportunities to integrate it into the artwork. And I want to try my hand at some of that stuff. No, totally. I, I, I see exactly what you mean. But so like with the makers, it's it's the same process too though, right? Like what do you just use digital for coloring then? And then like you're saying like letters? Yeah, for coloring for lettering. There was like one part of one page in issue five where I did try my hand at working some markers into it. And I liked how it looked. So that was sort of a test run. And we're going to see if we can do if I can do some more of that from now on. Is, this isn't your first comic though, right? No, no, but I tend to take really long breaks between projects and I got to stop doing okay. that. Um, although there's another one that I'm working on that's sort of dovetailed into this because I'm doing artwork for a comic written by a couple of friends of mine called The Last Paper Road, but uh, they're both busy, busy guys. One of them is a new dad so i haven't seen a script for a while so it's entirely possible i'll have finished all of the makers between the final two issues of that series so we'll see that's really cool yeah but i've got a lot of other stuff before that too so i've been doing comics for a while i just tend to take big long breaks when i finish a project and i'm trying to just have shorter and shorter breaks if i can sorry guys. yeah like i was saying i'm still a little i'm still new like with with your work and everything like i really do like it a lot i'm just i'm just new to your work um, so I'm curious, like, what, where did you start in comics then? Like, what brought, like, what brought you into comics? Because, like, you definitely, like, know what you're doing, you know. I want to get the makers as soon as possible. Uh, well, I don't know a time when I wasn't into comics. Like, I don't know how, how many. I mean, work. I mean, more so, like, trying to make them, really. Well, that's the thing. is Like, going back as okay. far as I can remember, I remember reading comics and I remember trying to make my own. So, I don't know. It was just a language I was always drawn to. Um, my mom used to buy me. I don't know, some of you guys would probably remember this, Spidey Super Stories, the comics that were done in conjunction with the Electric Company. Mm -hmm. okay. I My mom used to buy me those when I was really young to just to encourage me to read more and more. So it just kind of made an immediate impression and I've just been reading and trying to make my own comics ever since then. Nice. Okay, that's awesome, dude. I was just, I was just curious because yeah, again, I'm just a little new. But I'll, I'll kick it off to Ray. 
Hey, I, um, hey, thanks for uh, joining us tonight. I, I guess I got a question because I am, I'm like Rick, I'm new to your work as well. Um, but I've been looking at it, you know, throughout the day today. And I'm just kind of curious of like, I guess what your, what your bigger, your bigger influences are because um, you, you have this one picture of Richard Nixon drop kicking Frankenstein, which I love to death. It's a funny, <laughs> I'm old enough to remember Nixon, so that's why. Um, and then I've seen the, the work you've done with the makers and it's just different style. I know it's got that 90s homage, but then I've seen some other stuff you have on comicsology. And it's just, I'm kind of curious because there, I, I like the way you, you're able to like do slightly different things, at, at least to me. And it's not like all the same, but I was just more curious about that. I'm always curious about who people, um, um, you know, like wh where do they get their ideas from or who, who inspired them? Uh, well, like when I was a lot younger, I was way more drawn to guys like George Perez and John Byrne and guys like that. And I find nowadays I'm less interested in it and more and more I'm gravitating more towards stuff that I just kind of can't wrap my head around in a way. Like uh, when I look at somebody like, like I mentioned Michelle Fife and Copra, that's a series where like I look at it and I don't know how you come to those decisions. And that really makes me excited about it. Like just decisions about layout and color and composition. Um, so guys like him, uh, Frank Miller has been a huge influence all along. Um, geez, lately I'm really liking Matt Lesniewski stuff and, uh, Matt Allison stuff. Like, I don't know. I just draw from all over the place and, uh, I think it probably makes my stuff look a little confused, but, uh, I don't know. I guess we all get our influences and filter them in. However, do you we... think, do you think that switching who you get into is just part of the process? Like. It's sort of like music when you start listening to like a certain genre of music you listen to something that's a little bit easier to get in but the more you get into it the more like you're looking for i wouldn't say i'm not gonna say obscure i'm gonna say different type of work because you, you, george perez and john Byrne is like that really clean super superhero style and then you know you got guys with miller and matt allison who are like the super it's you know they, they, they're just pushing boundaries so I think it's just like, hey, look, I've done this. I can do this. I need to do something different because I need to grow. Yeah, or, I think pushing boundaries is a good way to put it. I want to like just, I think a good example recently, like I think it's come up on kayfabe a few times, is the recolor job on the killing joke, how Brian like, Bowen took the John Higgins colors away and just everything's colored very much more traditionally. And I look at it and I'm just like, I don't want this. Like when that book came out, I remember thinking like, I don't want to see this. I want to see something weird, something non-literal, something that really evokes the story. And that's just, I think, where I started realizing I'm going more and more in the direction of, uh, yeah, like the less clean, less literal translation of like perfect anatomy or drawing every window in every building. Like I'd rather see you suggest it or, I don't know, I guess I just don't want to be too married to like, this is how I feel about this artist and that's how I feel forevermore. I want to kind of reevaluate every couple of years. And that's brought me to some people who influenced me in ways that you may not see on the page, but I went on a big Sam Kick Keith two year or Sam Keith kick like two years ago. He okay. was a guy stuff I'd never really been all that into, and then suddenly that uh, Marvel Comics Presents story he did with Peter David, the uh, yeah, I think it's called Blood Hungry with that cyber guy. Yeah. I just became obsessed with that story, and then became obsessed with Sam Keith for a little while. And I don't know. I'm just trying. Lately, I'm just kind of in a sponge mode. I'm just trying to get different different looks from all over the place and see what I can do with it in my own work. I guess. That's cool. All right. And I have another question. I, I know that you're on Halifax. Is, is it this, I guess when it comes to like actually producing a comic and the distribution and, and, and just on your end and doing everything involved in the making, I, I, I guess it would be, I guess it's the Canadian and US market, are they pretty much the same or similar as far as what goes and what doesn't go? Or, um, I mean, we all speak English. It's all this, you know, it's very similar countries that, that you, you run better. Um, <laughs> that's just my opinion. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, but I mean, I'm just kind of curious because there are differences. I mean, there, there are differences. I just, they're subtle, but there are differences. I was more curious about that. Cause I can see like a publisher like Dorn and Corley and I know you're not working with them, but it's like, they're creating comics and they're very Canadian but they also make books that, you know, work outside of Canada. So I'm just kind of curious, are you just like making comments that you like and then like, hey, I'm gonna find my audience because I have social media and the, the internet 
and I can just find these people. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, I just want to, I think most of us, that's the goal, right? Is to draw something that you want to draw. <laughs> like I think it like, if, right. uh, you know, if you can do that, then you've got it set. Like if you're, especially if you're getting paid to do it, but even if you just get to a point where like you're drawing, like, I don't know if you got, are you guys reading Echo Lands, the new J.H. Williams comic from Image? Oh yeah. Image guys? Yeah, like, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Like, my thing with that book is like, this guy has got it to a place where he's able to write and illustrate this comic that seemingly it's just the stuff he wants to draw even if it's very weird and wild it's just that's he's not drawing anything he doesn't want to draw so yeah. ultimately i just want to draw what i want what i feel like drawing and hopefully find someone who likes it i don't know but the market here it's hard to judge here versus the u.s in some ways because i don't know that our store represents a lot of stores i don't know we just at least we're not just like a strictly marvel and dc store i guess so like right wider range of what we try to carry and uh oh that's good yeah we there's stores here that we in the u.s that they are like that but oh yeah no i know my, for my, sure. experience, my experience is a lot of them are marvel dc and then the other guys yeah um you know and part of that's like who's working at the store like i personally i'm not reading a lot of mainstream marvel dc these days so i tend to try to steer people towards like emergent dark horse or Oni or whoever or like small okay. so all right, cool. All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Hope that answered. I feel like that was kind of went off. No, 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 no. Yeah. Because it's not. It's not like there's a right or wrong. It's not like that. It's just more what your thoughts are. And sometimes when you say something, something else pops up. So it's just more like it's it's all relative to what we like. So yeah, you answered it. Thank you. No problem. Thanks so much, dude. Dude. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, um, we've got a lot of people. Uh, uh, who joined us. Thanks, everyone, and welcome. Uh, if anyone has any questions or anything, please do uh, raise your hand or hit up the chat area there. Uh, we're talking with Dave Hallett here, whose killer book, The Makers, is available now. Where can we get it, Dave, actually, if people are looking to grab it? Uh, well, you can get it through the store I work at, which is Strange Adventures. It's just strangeadventures.com. You can order it directly through them or through me. Uh, I've got a Gumroad page. The easiest way to find me is probably through my Instagram which is a uh, Paschetti Western. I should have, I should write it down and hold it up at some point. Like the <laughs> mail, mailbag episode. So it's, it's like, it sounds though. Yeah. Like P A S K E T T I Western. Like, I don't know, maybe this is a regional thing, but I feel like I always knew one kid that couldn't say spaghetti and that's how they said it. Right. And I'm a fan of spaghetti Western movies. And I thought nobody else is using this name for good reason. So now it's mine. <laughs> There's a great Primus song about spaghetti Westerns too called Spaghetti Western. Nice. For you to check out. Uh, Craig, you got any more? Uh, not right now. Let's open okay. it up to everyone else. Uh, I see Manny itching there. You got one, Manny? Oh, you're muted there, bud. No, I got it. Can you guys hear me? Gotcha. Yep. All right, uh, Dave, One, uh, two things. A, uh, props for the um, Dog Day Afternoon poster hanging out. Oh, in the it's my 70s movie wall right there. 70s New York yeah. movie wall. And the taxi driver figure. I have that one too. Um, uh, my question is, like, would you ever want to do like a whole issue with like some of the characters uh, from within the makers, like actually have like an issue of like Hellfire, like from start to finish, something like that, you know? Uh, it's tempting, but... Uh... As I was saying earlier, I have kind of a short attention span for this stuff, so I'm kind of happy to move on from this once issue six is done. But, you know, like uh, at some point, I might want to revisit it, and there's lots of kind of areas to explore if I do, like comics within the comic that I'm trying to build out the larger world with. Could make for fun little one-offs. Right, yeah. No plans right now, anyway, but I'm not closing the door on the idea. Cool, man. Yeah, that's, that's one of the... All I had. That's one of the really fun things about your book, I think, Dave, is that so much goes into it like that with uh, all the different stuff. You're not just creating one narrative. You're creating like all these different, you know, per the personal life stories of these different um, uh, creators, their books, those characters. So what's your behind the scenes process of like, do you make like script sheets? Do you make like, like, I'll just make straight up like character turnarounds and, and write all this backstory do you do all that stuff or uh yeah like i make preliminary notes early on and then when it comes time to do the issue it's a lot of uh 
doing thumbnails, mostly just trying to figure out what beats I've got to hit and then kind of referring to my notes and saying, okay, well, what's this use really largely going to be about? How can we work that in? Um, right. And then just sort of bouncing back and forth between the writing and the drawing until it's time to actually start drawing. Like just, you know, just sort of, uh, I don't know, just trying to pack each issue with as much as I can on multiple levels, hopefully. And sometimes that means going back to tiny little thumbnails that I can't decipher three months later or going back to <laughs> yeah. notes or like a full script. Or, yeah, this, my process is pretty chaotic. I don't know if I'd be much of a good collaborator. Oh yeah. Did, did you have personal experiences or personal things that you drew from, from the image comics world where you were like, oh, these are things like from my experience with image that I've got to like bring into this, like that I've got to represent somehow. Well, mostly just a lot of it was honestly like uh, reconciling with my own feelings about image because I was the age that like I was in my teens when image happened and I was really excited about it as we all were. And then I was sort of like ed aging into like a more cynical early 20s kind of thing. And I thought these guys are bullshit. They sold out, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. and then I just kind of turned on it. And then I started working in a comic shop and sort of seeing image dissolve from within as we all watched throughout the late 90s. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of this feeling of like, oh, the revolution got sold. You know, they were so close to changing everything. And uh, yeah. But then, you know, you, you get older and your perspective changes and then you start looking back at things. And there was just an excitement going on there that I don't always see in mainstream comics anymore, I guess. Like it's starting to creep back in. But uh, yeah, so it was really just a matter of like, how do I feel about all this and have like people that can represent different points of it and just different areas I can zoom in on, like the, you know, the speculator boom or, uh, you know, the struggle for creators rights or whatever. Um, right. Again, just, yeah, wanted a form to just talk about this stuff. And I think, yeah. I think, I think the, the, um, the neat thing about image is like the, those seven guys didn't do what they had initially set out to do. And it took like, it took like 10, 11 12 years for it to finally kind of really kind of happen and because like what they what image puts out to me is far better <clears throat> than than the other two you know when we're talking about the you know the quote unquote you know big three but uh i think it took a while for it to like kind of morph into um what what it was initially supposed to be which i think is another kind of point to, to the story that's that people don't really kind of dig into too much like it took a while to get there but it's there now and they're pretty they're pretty good at you know having a wide range and a wide selection of stuff that they they release which is which is great and yeah they're generally the, the section in previews that i'm most excited to check out i think yeah. uh they've sort of grown beyond what the initial promise of image was i mean you know the initial thing was like us seven guys are going to do our books forever and then we're going to bring some other people in and now it's you know eric larson and an assortment of other people popping in and out but then so many great books coming from them yeah. from new people all the time yeah it's i think it's a really exciting company it really has been for a while so and it's still creator own stuff which is what my point was it's like they finally it kind of like morphed into what they were kind of i think the general idea at the beginning was mm -hmm. but it's grown exponentially but it just finally kind of got to the spot where i think you know but yeah very cool yeah it's a pretty fascinating transformation i don't know if uh at one point even i was thinking like oh maybe i'll write a like a nonfiction book about image like i don't know if you guys ever uh, heard of the have any of you guys read easy riders raging bulls that's one of my favorite books man yeah yeah i love that book too and i just thought like this is there's a kind of a parallel here of uh like for anyone who doesn't isn't familiar with it it's about sort of the 70s in hollywood and all the directors like coppola and spielberg and lucas and guys who conquered hollywood but then all individually had these stories of like just hubris gone awry where like they finally were given their dream project and they were given a blank check to do whatever and then it all blew up in their faces and you get stuff like heaven's gate or uh, new york new york or like william friedkin making sorcerer and uh, i thought like, there's a real parallel here with the 90s where like these image guys got to this point where they could just do anything and for a little while they did and then you know reality sets in and the wheels come off speaking of the image guys do you know if any of them have seen the book or, or not to my it, knowledge or uh, aware of it? Yeah, I, probably not. I'm thinking, um, I don't know. Uh, have you thought about sending it to them? I mean, like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel a little weird about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I get it. I get it. 
I certainly don't want them to not know about it. It's not like I'm worried I'm going to get sued or anything. But uh, no, I just... no, yeah, I was just like, I, you know, I wonder what their reaction would be. I mean, you know, I, I don't imagine it would be negative because it's not a negative. You're not. You, I don't think you're doing anything negative with them at all. You know, such a good idea, though. How could they not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It seems yeah. like something like I'm surprised Image wouldn't want to do this. You know, like. I did submit the first issue. I never heard back, but <laughs> I'm not sure if it's ready for image, frankly. Hopefully uh, one day I'll get something that's good for image. Oh man. It, oh, I, it I, most I, certainly is, dude. I uh, wasn't fishing <laughs> for compliments. <laughs> but thank you. I know you were but, <laughs> but I'll like, take yeah, it. I, I, but that that was my honest reaction. Oh, thanks. Uh, you know, like one day if conventions are a thing again, maybe I'll get to hand it to one or two of them. I don't know. Um, yeah. We'll see. You should definitely. <laughs> Give a copy to Rob Liefeld and see what happens. You know, <laughs> he's a pretty positive guy. I don't, I don't imagine him getting upset. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like I, I did meet Eric Larson one time at Comic Con and give him a proposal for a book that a friend of mine and I were collaborating on, and he actually did take the time to email me back and you know a rejection, but still like had some good points. And I thought like I'm just some bozo handing him a proposal in the middle of Comic Con. Like he should have just thrown it in the trash, mm -hmm. but he actually took the time to like read it over and write back which i always thought was great <laughs> larson's always seemed pretty accessible to me like it seems yeah. like people reach out to him he'll genuinely take the time to... well he's still got a thriving letters page so yeah he likes to engage with fans yeah i think that's great i don't think he reached that level of celebrity that some of the other guys did to make to make them like lose track of you know who they are or something like that you know i think he yeah. is it's like he's like garnering like you know he's getting more traction lately you know what i mean it seems like real comic book guys that make comic books love fucking eric larson you yeah know I mean? well and, yeah, his, and his book's been there you know it's just it's yeah it's never you know it's never faltered it's always there every month you know what i mean for better or worse i think right eh? Yeah, I, uh, you guys, any of you who follow me on Instagram would have seen, I recently, a couple years ago, I acquired the bulk of the run of Savage Dragon, like I think about 160 issues for the price of shipping from Toronto. Wow. So it was 35 bucks. <laughs> and uh, I've since been filling in all the issues since and trying to catch up to it. So I was reading one a day for a while and uh, reading it like it was a daily newspaper strip, essentially. And it was a fascinating mind altering process just watching his style change and watching him kind of keep himself interested and watching oh he's trying out a new brush technique this time or he's trying out a crazy panel configuration just got to be a really experimental book and just a joy to read i thought i mean sometimes pretty harsh like i don't know there's some pretty crazy stuff that goes on and uh some pretty weird stuff but just on the pure artistic level and storytelling level it was pretty invigorating that's awesome yeah he seems like an endless supply of creativity and endless just creative human especially when we were watching his uh his uh shoot interview with the kayfabe guys i mean that was inspiring man yeah well i hit this moment when like in the recent issues they've introduced the very very first version of dragon they did from like graphic fantasy number one is now yeah. like a supporting character and wow. it it blew my mind because i thought like this guy has literally been spinning the same narrative this is part of the continuity now so this guy has been spinning the same <laughs> continuous narrative since childhood and like this ongoing super it's nuts like there's really no precedent for it it's true yeah and like i mean even if anyone who had it previously i mean they're not around right now and we're not able to like see it because i mean the only thing you could draw a parallel to really is like cerebus in whereas like the character is is analogous with the life and you know i guess mage matt wagner kind of did it as a parable of his life but nothing as long ongoing as dragon yeah i guess i should qualify that by saying a superhero book but because yeah you're right True. with grendel and services and yeah yeah well mage just had to get that fucking matt, matt wagner yeah i had to i had to get a mention <laughs> somewhere you know it is his 60th birthday today happy birthday matt wherever you are <laughs> Um, anyone else have any questions out there or I'll, I'll flip it back over to, to, uh, Rick or Ray or Craig. Uh, welcome Joseph to the mix. Uh, just noticed he came in. Um, Rick, you got something? It's, <clears throat> what's shipping, what's shipping been like for you, like, uh, shipping out from Canada to, 
to America because for me, it's been pretty pricey having to send books out, you know, like in reverse. Yeah, it's it's not great, but things have been seemingly getting there and not getting there damaged, which I was worried about. Um, hasn't really been too many hiccups, but yeah, the price is always going up, especially now since there's so much of it happening. Um, we got no real snafus there yet, knock wood. Do you use, do you, um, what's the one you guys were using, Chit Chat? Yeah, chit chat. That's supposed. Have to be. you been using that one? I haven't. Somebody, maybe even Craig, somebody recommended it to me, but I haven't had a chance to look into it yet. It seems so good, and I think it only cost Jerome like five dollars to send me send me some books, and it was here in like four days. Like I'm in Southern California, and he's in Toronto near Craig, and it was yeah, it was here like days, less it's than like, a week. Yeah, it's like seventy five percent of cost. Like it's pretty, it's pretty fucking cheap, man. And it's crazy. They're, pop, they're popping yeah. up everywhere. I don't know if there's one out near your Dave. Dave, I'm not sure, but you should look into it for sure. Yeah, I haven't heard of any, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna definitely investigate it. What is it? Just something you pay like a, like a flat it's, fee for? I don't really. Yeah, know. It's like a post office, but not like hooked up with Canada Post. It's like a shipping agency. You know what I mean? Like like UPS almost. You know okay. what I mean? And I think uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess they get a cut rate through some delivery service. I don't know. I don't even know. Rick, you know if it showed up like when he sent that to you through Chit Chats, was it like UPS that delivered it or? Yeah, my 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 mail lady dropped it off. Oh yeah, so there you go. Hmm. And yeah, that's all. I, I wish there was something in reverse because uh, you should really look into that because that's such a like, good opportunity for you guys to get the books out there because it's just like sending it right regular, yeah. like what it would be if I sent it to someone out here. Hmm. Yeah, it's I think if we so added good. here, I would have heard about it by now, but I'll definitely investigate it because, uh, yeah. yeah. Looking You'd be surprised, there. Dave. I didn't even know I fucking had one here in town. Like, and I just drove past. I was like, hey, what the fuck? So you right. might, you might, there might be one there in Halifax. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'll look into it. Thanks. No, totally. Yeah. That's like such, seems like such a big hurdle these days is the international shipping and getting it to anyone who's anywhere other than you. Yeah, man, like that fucking, I got, uh, look what Ed Gain done, but uh, by, by Powell, and it was shipped July, the middle of July, I think, and I didn't get it till, what was it, yesterday, Eli? Or the yeah, day I think before? it was, yeah. Like, it took forever <laughs> to get here, and... Uh, I've had mine so long, I already forgot about it on the uh, yeah. to read pile, you know? Yeah, right, like... You just, and a graph books are... They're like three weeks, four weeks late now. It's crazy. Oh yeah, I got like Fantagraphics. That's a whole other subject. Like I, I got, um, yep. I got the first Red Room through them, and I think it was like three weeks late, three four weeks late. Yeah, and it was shipped to the wrong address. Like every issue, because I ordered the first four through their website, and I mean, like I've been going to my local comic shop too to get them, but like it's pretty consistent at least two weeks the issue four just came yesterday to me oh wow yeah yeah they, i checked they only have chit chats they have one in ottawa which is the one that that craig you're mentioning and then they have a ton of them near toronto mississauga hamilton brampton but that's the only places they have them in canada for right now central oh. Ontario. i'm sure it's yeah gonna It'll make it to oh, right here for sure. Yeah, you guys yeah are, because uh, you guys are, is always last to get shit like from from here. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think our shipping hasn't been as bad. Like I know the U.S. has had certain uh, problems with the post office the last year or two, but so I worry every time I send something over the border. But I haven't really had any issues yet. Like our stuff has largely been running pretty smoothly. Right. Uh, I got I got another question for you. What uh, what's your art background, buddy? Like, um, did you go to school? Like, no, like I uh, you know I took I'm I'm largely self taught. Like I went to art class in high school, but didn't really get much out of that. I went to the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design here at a high school, and I dropped out after a semester, half a semester, I think. Because yeah, they just like the type of stuff I wanted to do was just strongly discouraged. Like they were like, we're not doing you know, we're, it was more of a fine arts college, basically. It was, it was a bad fit. So, yeah. and then everything else since then has just been self-taught or learning, learning Photoshop skills from people who know more about it than I do or whatever. Nice. Nice. Well, it's phenomenal stuff. Man. It looks great. I love it. Thanks. 
you talked about some of the other stuff that you've been doing, but do, is there anything that's kind of just like a little bit farther down the line that you're like thinking of that you've got these like sparks in your head or anything that you've uh, been trying to get going on? Well, I have this idea that I've been kind of like picking at for a while. That's sort of like, I'm a big fan of the movie Fletch. I don't know if anybody else is. Oh man. yeah, I, that theme it, yeah. song. <laughs> but, uh, but I had this idea about doing like a kind of Hollywood version of that with a character named MacGuffin and it would be called Everybody Wants MacGuffin. Nice. It would sort of be like kind of Hollywood satire mystery nonsense, but uh, it's still very early stages on that one. So I might do my slasher movie one, uh, Disco Ripper. I might do that beforehand or in between the two, I think. Nice. Dude, that Harold Faltermeyer soundtrack out on Fletch. I mean, oh, is yeah. there anything more 80s than Harold Faltermeyer music? That's uh, great. All it's missing is the saxophone. <laughs> Oh, a sexy saxophone. <laughs> Although I think some of the songs, like there's that uh, Get Out of Town by Dan Hartman on there. That's probably got some sax in it. Oh my God, I think dude. It, it's, okay. it's too bad Bill Cosby was such a douche because it's like you could do, I always thought about doing like Leonard one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> <laughs> well, when that movie came out, I remember being legitimately confused. and like, I don't remember <laughs> Leonard one through five. Why am I going to go see six? <laughs> Too con- I guess it was too uh, too complicated, too uh, sophisticated humor for me. Yeah, it's uh, better. You have to be in a different state of mind to really get it. And yeah, you might need some quaaludes and some wine to get that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, like conversely, uh, one of my favorites from that era is Buckaroo Banzai, and I think the strength of that movie is that it is like you're picking up action comics issue 857 which as a kid you wouldn't go well i don't have the first 856 you just dive right in and buckaroo bonsai if you're into it that's kind of what it is it's just, you're just dropping in the middle with all these characters in the middle of a crazy adventure and uh see you next issue which we never got yeah right it was like yeah. remo williams i've always wanted to like fucking keep that because i love that fucking movie man remo williams was my jam <laughs> yeah, I was going to revisit that one recently because I watched the Cisco Ebert review of it on YouTube and uh, it doesn't seem to be streaming anywhere. Yeah, it's tough to find. Oh man. Remo Williams. I don't know that movie. Oh, but Wilford Brimley. It begins. Yeah, Wilford Brimley. Watching for sure, dude. It's great. It was one of those movies that played on HBO like every day back in the day. No, no, no. Back in the day, it was Beastmaster. That's what HBO started. Oh, yes. As hey, Beastmaster's on, right? <laughs> Beastmaster. And TBS was Clash of the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> What's the movie called again? Remo. 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 The Adventure Begins. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, it wow. ends. <laughs> Isn't there? Oh, I, I see. I see. This guy, Fred Ward, who was in yeah, Escape from Alcatraz and Tremors. Yeah. yeah interesting i know there was a comedian named emo williams that was a different guy (laughs) he talked like this very different movie (laughs) that's emo phillips actually emo phillips there it is Uh, he's got a cameo and he cuts Uh, i was wondering i used to have remember that short attention span theater that mark maron hosted they had like a cd rom for mac back in the day and i watched emo emo phillips on there a lot well, sweet. We got way off track. <laughs> what happens when Fletch gets into the mix? Oh, my God. I know. I, I literally, I made that theme song a ringtone on my phone. That's why I was, like, playing it earlier. Nice. I wake up to the soothing sounds of Faltermeyer <laughs> when I'm trying to have a funky day. Ah, Dave, so what else is going on, man? What are you reading right now? Like, as far as comics, like, do you read? And you say you work at a comic book shop. So as far as, like, a weekly, monthly pull type sh- stuff, what are you, what are you reading? probably a lot of the same stuff you guys are reading i'm guessing like we're all reading ed and jim and tom i assume um, <laughs> yeah uh, i've mentioned michelle fife a number of times uh really liking alexis zurich stuff lately night hunters i don't know if you guys read that i thought that was dope That's um, really good yeah what else have i uh i just read november volumes one to four by matt fraction and elsa charitier it's like sort of a crime novel but three women on one night that all get mixed up in a crazy criminal conspiracy um very similar to like the parker adaptations that darwin cook did oh yeah um i just read it... volume one of that too it's really good so of november fun. yeah 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 i liked it a lot great color in it too like just really cool use of color uh yeah like i said matt 
Allison Kankor, I think it's terrific. Uh, so good. One of the best comics I feel like going on these days. Yeah, like such a trip. Just like, again, that thing where you're looking at it and going just like, how does he come up with this? Where, like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's quite how he sees the world, but it's like the closest you get to seeing how someone sees the world when you find someone with a talent like that, where it's like, like, wh- how are you coming to this? It blows my mind. I love it. <laughs> he was a guest. We had him on here. Yeah, he was our first, the first guest. Uh, is that archived somewhere? Yeah, it's on uh, my YouTube channel. I can send it to you. Yeah, okay. it was him and, and Jim Rugg, actually, was the first step. Oh, cool. Allison's you know wrong. I, I really love the uh, the backup features you did of uh, like your, uh, your auto bio stuff, like about working at Kenny Rogers and stuff. Would you ever want to do more with that? <laughs> I really, I mean, because I work at a restaurant, man. I really connected with that stuff. Oh, thanks. Uh, I might do more of that stuff. I don't know, like... It's sort of an odd fit in the back of these comics. If I had my way, if I had unlimited time, I would have gone full on Alan Moore 1963 and it would have been all in-universe stuff like fake ads and like pages and pages of fake letters and, you know, just that kind of world building stuff. But so the digital files that I made for the issues were only 24 pages and then suddenly I had eight more pages to fill and I had all this stuff that I think I'd mostly been putting on my Instagram. I thought I'll just reformat this and just have like, you know, backup funnies, I guess. So sometimes that means they're, they're good, though. I mean, they, like I said, they really landed with me, and I, I, I think they're strong enough that you could do more with them. Like, well, thanks. I think, uh, yeah, you know, the Kenny Rogers one, I think, was still working through some past trauma, <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, yeah, Kenny I and I it. made our peace with that one. <laughs> Kenny Rogers roasters. Yeah. yeah, I worked. Oh man, awful, awful job. Oh my god, we had one of those in our town for a little while. And uh, famously on uh, on uh, Seinfeld with the uh, neon sign. That's right. I think that episode aired either, I can't remember if I was still working there or if it had just gone out of business in Nova Scotia. But I remember my roommates like yelling to me down the hall, oh my God, Kenny Rogers Rose is on Seinfeld. And I thought they were full of shit, but somehow <laughs> the whole plot came out of it. Oh man, so, okay, awesome. The Makers, y'all, uh, you can get it on Dave's. Uh, my Instagram, Gum, Gum Road Instagram, is probably the best place to find me. And I got the uh, the address to my the link to my Gum Road is in my bio there. What about yeah. the Strange Adventures on the back? Well, that's the comic shop that I work at. Oh well, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, Cal said to just make up an ad for the back cover to advertise the store, and I was <coughs> don't know why I was thinking of that uh, that X Men trading card ad, but I just wanted to repurpose it. So my tip of the hat to the era. Real quick, you want, you want to talk about your Bob the Goon mini comic? Oh my god! Uh, yeah, I talk about that. Um, that was just there was a local there's a local comic arts festival that we put on that Strange Adventures puts on every August called the Dartmouth Comic Arts Festival. We had Ed and Jim out for it actually in 2019, and uh, I was going to be tabling with my friend Sean Jordan, who used to work with me at Strange Adventures. Uh, he's also a rapper. But it goes by the name Word Burglar. I highly recommend you check his stuff out, especially if you're a G.I. Joe fan. He has an entire G.I. Joe concept album. Um, wow. But we were getting ready to table, and he was like, you know, we were getting some stuff together for it. And I thought, I got to have something new to debut. And uh, I had just watched, I think it was maybe the 30th anniversary of the Michael Keaton Batman. And I just sort of had the idea to follow up with what might have happened to Bob Lagoon if he'd survived. And I just always felt bad for that character. And I was like the actor who played him. So I wanted to explore his story a little bit more sometimes you just got to find that unclaimed piece of real estate you know and plant your flag that's it are you doing any commissions are you like uh open for commission kind of deal like if someone wants something done yeah like i mean i've done stuff for people before like it's not something i go out of my way to ever like offer but like if someone comes to me i will yeah i'll be i'll be reaching out soon for something cool all right I was wondering, yeah, about that, uh, about like you doing commissions and, and how much more like when you're sketching and when you're doing your own stuff, what do you usually draw? What was your like go-to when you were growing up? Was there like that, you know, for me, I feel like I just drew Batman more than like anyone else, like throughout the whole of your life. Is there like a go-to warm up <coughs> character that you draw? uh not these days but yeah it was a lot of batman a lot of spider-man um you know a lot of the marvel dc stuff um nowadays i'm just trying to 
I don't know, like if I'm trying to draw something every day and if sometimes that means coming up with weird themes of like, I'm gonna explore this <laughs> idea for a while, like trying to uh, recreate horror movie VHS boxes from memory without looking them up online and just, you know, putting my own spin on it or uh, yeah. doing a weird series of like women on the phone. <laughs> like just, uh, I don't know, just like in kind of like relaxation clothes, like having a, like a phone call or getting a text or something. Just like, let's see what I can do with this for a little while. I don't know. It's almost like a automatic drawing exercise or something. Just trying to find a weird theme and hitch onto it until the next one comes along. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun keeping up like that and, and, and following along like this kind of uh, creative growth that people go to i mean it was it always like started off with like ninja turtles like i was saying or batman or something like that and yeah, it's just fun to to trace it all well cool thank you so much dave for joining us i know we have another guest coming up but he is he he is on his way i'm sure uh shout out to tony farrow for joining us what up tony yo how's it going man just chilling chilling uh, if anyone does have any questions about uh, getting their TikTok active, Tony's got a, a super fun TikTok going on. Yeah, I'm trying. I, I, I feel like we need more more cartoonists on TikTok. It's yeah. it's an unexplored space in, for cartoonists. Well, I joked about that earlier. Like, is there much comic content stuff happening on TikTok? There's not. That's my, that's my point is <clears throat> we need to bring it because it's not there. It's There's like, a little bit, but not much. I look at TikTok like I look at Twitter. It's like, you know, it's like the most easily cantina, just a hive of villainy and scum. <laughs> like, I avoid it like the fucking plague. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I felt that way for a long time, but I, I don't. I, there's, there's a lot of good content on there if you look for it. All right. It's, yeah, you got to figure out how to game the uh, algorithm. Yeah, the big, yeah. thing, big thing for me, I think I get so caught up and get lost and like, you know, you start watching those videos and then fucking next thing you know, it's like two hours fucking later and <laughs> you're supposed yeah. to be drawing and it's like, God damn, you know what I mean? So yeah, I, try, yeah. I really try to stay away from that shit. Yeah, you, you gotta be disciplined. Yeah. There was like a weird generational moment at my store one time where like, I think it was some X-Men book had just come out and it was a big finale. This is just within this year. And someone's saying, oh, I already had the ending spoiled for me on TikTok. And then somebody else who was a few years old was like, yeah, Instagram spoiled it for me. And then I think someone else, it was Facebook, it spoiled it for them. Oh, I assume there's some old guy in the back talking about his MySpace rooting it. I don't know. <laughs> like I, I work um, I work with a lot of younger kids. I have a lot of younger kids and like Facebook to them is like old man shit. Oh yeah. Like, oh, I'm, yeah. An, like I'm an old man, you know, like I, like I don't have a TikTok and like, a Snapchat, they 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 communicate almost exclusively through Snapchat. It's crazy. Yeah, that's another reason why I think we need to to get on TikTok is because if you if you want to get the kids, if you want to bring the kids into it, you got to go where they are, and they're they're not on Facebook at all, they're, and they're leaving Instagram in droves. Yeah, these kids, so, these, these kids buy their, these kids buy their weed through Snapchat. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> We just go to the store. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I have a card, so I do too. But like they, 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 they uh, yeah, they, they use. It's absolutely crazy. I, I straight up quit Snapchat too. I was just like, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm feeling bad about my own life by looking at so many other people's lives so much. I'm like, this is. I don't have a Snapchat. I don't have a Snapchat or a TikTok. You know, the only thing I use fucking Facebook for is ringside seats. 100%. I don't I, I'm pretty it. much there too, yeah. Same. 100%. Like I, to keep in touch with all you guys for the most part, like, you know, and I am thankful for it because I'm, I've met like a ton of fucking rad people and shit, but it's like. Oh, it's, it's. I mean, every day I get something out of the group, man. Like if. if yeah, yeah. Like I, like I belong to other comics groups, but nothing is like. No, like like this, you know what I mean? It's a totally. Like I, I feel like the group and like the 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 small circle is like a part of my daily life. Like I share shit all the every day. Like it's it's hey, Tony, day hey. isn't complete unless it's like I don't know. I it, I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. it's it's a real a real part of my of, of my my daily routine now, and I, I really love it. You know. I yeah, that. the only other reason I think, yeah, this, this, I use it for work. I use it for this stuff, which I love this group and I love the, the corporate press club group. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. 
and also to make sure my to keep an eye on my parents to make sure they're not being radicalized online and falling prey to like <laughs> you know internet nonsense because a couple times i had to step in and say <laughs> That's yeah I, fox news don't believe it <laughs> right. I, I, I had an uncle like that too i had to keep stepping in like all right well you need to relax like <laughs> well my parents are, are pretty much radical leftists so i don't have to worry about that <laughs> yeah i'm about there myself too but it's fun yeah i mean i i, I really do only go on facebook for for this group i mean you know there's nothing else that like i'm not interested in anything else in it. you know what i mean like there's a couple other comic groups, but I don't like to, I don't pay attention to them. Hey Tony, in the in the yeah. show notes, why don't you share your 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 um, TikTok channel? Because I, I think I mean, who knows? It's an unexplored space. You said so. Maybe it has an end game. Maybe it doesn't. But you don't know if you don't explore. Exactly. That's my whole point. It's like I've yeah. said it before. I'm like I'm not like people think I'm trying to sell it, but I'm I'm just selling trying it. That's all. You know. Yeah, um, but, but yeah. That's, that's part of it. I mean, it's like it's like you 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 miss you miss all the shots you don't take. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know. yeah. That's right. The yeah. way to the uh, the hearts of the Canadians in the room. Yeah. So my yeah my that, TikTok that was handle is, but I'm glad. <laughs> it's uh, it's just Rubber Wolf, just at Rubber Wolf. Well, what do you share on TikTok? I mean, you know, since most people just do the videos, like what what do you share as far as like? Just well, it's a. I try to do as much uh, comic and art related stuff as I can, but I do sort of veer into like other territories as well. But um, I do like process videos where I'll just, you know, show myself drawing or okay. talk about the process. And uh, sometimes I'll just show off like comics that I bought recently and talk about them. I haven't really done too much of talking about them, but I'll just show them, show them off, you know? And uh, I'm just dipping my toe in there. I haven't created a whole lot of content yet, but I've done some things where I've like done some, time lapse uh dr you know videos of drawing um and stuff like that so that's cool yeah it's almost an extension of what like some people do on instagram because I, I i was thinking of like what what could i do you know because i'm not really an artist but like i i like showcase like dollar comics on my instagram i could i could do that on tiktok i'm sure you could totally do it and it's great because you could just yeah just hold up the comic and just talk about it in real time right. you know and it's, yeah it's really cool it's it's the thing i like about it is it's very conversational like um, in, in like Instagram and Facebook and stuff, you have to think about like, you know, writing, you know, you're writing your words and it's like, whereas on, on TikTok, you know, you could just, you just talk, you know, and you don't have to think about formulating your, your sentences and shit. You know what I mean? No, that's it's more conversational I hadn't thought about, about it that way. I, I, I'll, I'm going to give it a shot. That's an interesting. Yeah. It's worth a shot. Yeah, man. I mean, anything to, like you said, to get, to, to get like comics out there in, in, in any community is, is positive man you know like yeah i don't think we should take any any uh possibility any you know promotional uh, avenues for granted you know yeah, yeah true. I mean, absolutely the facebook group has been so good like why not take that momentum into like other social media platforms i mean mm -hmm. yeah that's why i would i would love to see uh you know a cartoonist kayfabe group you know like a presence on tiktok because there's a there's a couple of people on there but for the most part all the comic stuff that i see is is very mainstream oriented and yeah. there's not a lot of indie stuff on there dave and chisholm's we, got a good one he's about one he of the does. only people that i yeah yeah and he's very active so he's yeah. like the only person i see who's really taking advantage of the, the platform yeah and he gets the views and he gets people coming in and yeah he's doing it mm-hmm that's a good idea, man. I'm I'm definitely gonna check that out, dude. Yeah. I am unconvinced so far, Tony. I'm still <laughs> There's cat videos and <laughs> cooking videos. Don't you want to watch uh, Gordon Ramsay make fun of people somewhere else? <laughs> I love Gordon Ramsay. I don't even care. I am <laughs> too. So it's not just all TikTok videos of people doing shuffle dancing or whatever it is they do now. Oh, no, that's kind of a that, misconception. Yeah. That was TikTok a couple of years ago. It's changed a lot. It's it's a lot more varied in this content now. Wow. I don't know what the what that was. What the what? <laughs> that was my son yawning. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's cool. 
Um, so our second guest is uh, getting off from work. So hopefully uh, he's in soon. I know he will be, but we can vamp yeah, for a little he bit. The message, but he hasn't seen it yet. So he could be driving or something. Yeah, exactly. It's all good. Eli, you thanked me earlier and I kind of spaced out and I meant to say thank you for having me on. <laughs> oh, of course. I didn't know if I was being ushered out. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, yeah, we're chilling out. Um, cool. All thanks go to Craig this week. Craig uh, organized both amazing guests this week and did uh, all the communication and stuff. So, yeah, I, I, like, I think everyone should like really thank Dave because it's Thanksgiving weekend here. So it's like, oh, yeah. oh really? Oh. Uh, Took some time out, uh, I'm sure, of his schedule. To, uh, oh, no, no, it's, you know, it's all good, actually. Uh, my wife went out of town to visit her family in Ontario today, so I've, I'm not seeing my own, my mom and dad till tomorrow, so my night is free. It's no sweat. Very cool. Still oh, very, yeah. Yeah, very, very nice. I haven't forgotten. I got to mail you that issue of Savage Dragon I got for you. Oh, yes, that, that was very exciting. Yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, the one that I picked, yeah. yeah. I got to get that out for you, man. I got to set well, aside, so... No hurry. I'm kind of detoxing from my Savage Dragon deep dive, but uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> I owe you for that. Yeah, man. Nope. I, I already read it, so I just wanted to read through it before I sent it out, but I'm not nearly as a completist on the series as you are, so if, <laughs> if it's going to help you out, then definitely, man. Well, thanks. Yeah, let me know. I'm very excited. I'm down to like seven issues left, I think, that I need now. So uh, That was like, what, 217, something like that? It was one of the ant issues. I think it was 216. Yeah. Yeah, I did have ant on the cover. Yeah, what's what's going on with that? With because like I have not like dived a bunch into uh, to his like to that fucking shit at all. But I know there was like omnibuses that were being released at a time, and then they just kind of stopped, right? Like they he 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 wasn't doing them anymore. Dude, I think they're still doing them. The big black and white phone book ones. The yeah, they are. The they are yeah, I, I have believe- a couple. Of them. Um. I don't think they sell a lot. I think he, he's sort of at a weird point where he doesn't really know how to, you know, it's a lot to catch up on and people don't generally like to dive into a book in the, when it's in the hundreds these days, but yeah. uh, that's the constant struggle that he's having. So he's trying to keep it in print as much as he can. But there's a good number of archive books. Like there's at least most of the series has been collected that way. I think so. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll try to get it. Do you, got, do you have any at the store, Dave? Do you know? I actually don't think we do right now Um, because yeah like it's one of those things that like we probably should I should probably at least try the first few but it seems like kind of a weird hard sell I don't know and I think for myself color is such an important part of it that the uh the black and white ones I don't know if it would be the same it's crazy that fucking Spawn has had so many iterations and and Savage Dragon hasn't like it just seems kind of he seems like the redheaded stepchild at times I think (laughs) you know what I mean like he's just kind of forgotten about at times you know and in all yeah. reality, like, you know. He's been the most consistent, probably, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, he's the only one. Like, Liefeld said it. Like, yeah, Todd can say he's got the longest running whatever, but, like, Larson's doing, like, interiors. Like, he's not just, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's true. You know what I mean? And, and Larson always said, like, when he started Image, his, his goal was he just wanted to do his own comic and do everything in it for as long as he wanted to, and he's he's doing it. Mm-hmm. you can see like that in that instance alone you can see like who the showman is and who the who the who the worker is you know yeah. what I mean? like, you he's, know, like, he just loves this comic and he's like he's just happy doing it you know i found that i've like like because i haven't done a huge savage dragon read, but you can see like it seems like to me that there's certain points where he's embraced kirby quite a bit yeah like, or and that seems to be a little bit more prevalent now like you can see it a little bit stronger like he's kind of reaching back to that a little bit more and that's that's really especially with like a lot of like the 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 form of the figures and like the the perspective and like just like the even some of the poses like i've I've seen yeah definitely and and the 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 storytelling too how it's all like sort of like like coming like a mile a minute like like that kirby like sort of like yeah yeah Yeah, he's a huge uh kirby uh student of kirby he yeah Mm-hmm. He actually doesn't he moderate one of the Kirby groups on uh, Facebook? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. He, yeah, he does. He definitely does. Yeah, but yeah, like, and he does a lot of that Kirby thing of like splash page and then open yeah. it double splash. Uh, lately, he's yeah. been really into like the uh, really bombastic titles and bombastic next issue captions. Uh, yeah, just a lot of Silver Age Marvel stuff getting worked into it. De- definitely a lot of Silver Age right now. Yeah, but uh, also a lot of. 
hardcore sex too it's a, it's a weird mix of things that that's always been like a weird component in the series you know like i mean i'm i'm, I'm i've always been comfortable with it i i don't care but i, I it, it has been kind of a strange component of it oh yeah no it totally has it's just gotten way more explicit in the last few years um like you know there's a strong like sexualization of maxine in the book and like oh totally which was one I, of the points where i got to where like she gets assaulted and i thought like uh, do i want to keep reading this anymore it was yeah, pretty yeah. it was pretty gross and it was sort of like he portrayed her as sort of sexually voracious for so long leading up to it that it was just yes. kind of like i mean e even recently he's still sure. portraying her <laughs> like that like there's a lot of scenes with her like that you know mm -hmm. so yeah that it doesn't all work out but um yeah i don't know like the, the sexual stuff it doesn't bother me when he does it yeah you know, i don't think like the extreme I don't gore think <laughs> I don't think it's problematic or anything like that. Yeah. But I don't know. Like I said, I find it a really fascinating read. And now I'm kind of sad, though, that I have to wait for the next issue like everybody else. <laughs> I didn't just have a box. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, what, you're caught up now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I still have Dragon on my pull list, so I read it every month, you know? Hmm. I don't think I've ever read more than one issue of Savage Dragon. Maybe I should. I think you would dig it, man. There's a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff in some of those early issues. That's oh, okay. Maybe yeah. three or four then, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. I've read those crossovers, the Dooney one and the Larson one. Yeah, right Right up until like issue 10 or 11, they, they had like a strong crossover. Because I, I have some of those early issues and like the Turtles are on the cover and like are a pretty big part of the story. Yeah, he was pretty, he was pretty crucial in getting the Turtles over to Image, I thought as well. Oh yeah. After their yeah, mirage. That, that, makes a, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because he was the editor or something and he was drawing covers for that volume three. I never read any of those image turtle books. They're okay. There's a fun transformation where Raphael becomes a shredder and shit. That's pretty fun. Oh, really? It's pretty uh, interesting. Yeah, I think he cuts off Shredder's head and then steals his steals the mask and so there's like these really cool you know images of raf with the mask on and he, he crosses over they cross over with freak force a bunch i think mikey dates like the spiky girl from freak force <laughs> that's a horrendous <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah. and um yeah there's some there's some interesting stuff that's where donnie originally breaks his shell and breaks his back and becomes like a robot there's been a real resurgence around here in uh tmnt stuff like even before last Ronin was a thing i just think uh you know we're talking about comics with like long running times that one's over issue 100 right. now it's usually when it's petering up but i find it's been picking up steam a lot lately yeah i haven't kept up with it myself but it's just cool to see even though the the ongoing even for me who is kind of like a blind tmnt fan like i just will eat it it's even for me it's getting a little bit strange at this point not strange, but ah, maybe boring is the term. Do you, do, you read, <laughs> do you read the monthly title or no? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I just read yeah, it today on the bat in the bathroom, and it was done before I even barely started. I read it. And I was like <laughs> five minutes in. And I was like, now what am I supposed to do? You know? Yeah. It. it what Actually, happens with that book? It goes like in lulls, and then they have action, but it seems like the lulls are longer now, and the action peaks are shorter. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I know, I think the whole concept is they're talking about building community, but yeah. at some point it's like, there's a reason why you watch Read the Turtles. Eventually you need to see some action and they do have action, but they're kind of like just giving you little bits and yeah. they're not like, and they're not like giving you that meal. They're just giving you enough so you're not starving, but not enough to be satisfied. Yeah. Maybe it's time you're... for like a create a creative team change like i mean i do love what sophie campbell has done but she's been on the title now for what 30 yeah, but, 30 ish yeah but you know yeah I, I guess i mean it's more of a i don't know i think they're starting to lead up to something because like if you read the, i read the annual i don't know if you read the annual i haven't i mean i have it it's, the annual I mean, that made me mad man the, i put me to sleep I liked it because I you think there was, I think I think they were like trying to finally say okay we're gonna address something but I think it's like sometimes you know some shows like the X Files years and years and years and years ago 
tease something and tease something and tease oh, something. Yeah. And it took so long to tease it that by the time it happened, you're like, eh, that's it, whatever. Like nothing would have satisfied you. At some point, you got to like, like deliver a little bit so people don't go hungry. And then you can like f- go on a fast for a little bit and then you got to feed them a little bit of action. I, right. I think it's, it's an interesting character study. But again, I think it's sort of like, it's about the Rat King, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah the Rat King a... seems like he's going to be the next big bad or whatever. Right. And so I it's think, like, uh... yeah, I, I think they decided to go into direction change. Maybe they're trying to go for the YA crowd. You for know, right but now. With, are, for yeah. right now, without, without being obvious about it. But, you know, it's like, I don't know if the YA crowd is looking at Turtles. And I don't know if Turtles fans are necessarily looking at the YA crowd. It's sort of like, it's it's hard when you've had like a character. That's, that what? That's why I mentioned like maybe it's a time for a creative team change. Like, uh, I agree. Change the direction of the book, you know. Like, I'd like I to see a more a, a more gritty Turtles book again. You know, like. So, so Dave, you were telling me that you were saying that there was like a big increase in Turtles interest. Is it the, uh, I'm sorry if I missed it, because is, is it the older stuff? Is it the newer stuff? Is it a combination? It's is kind it... of both. Like a lot of the more expensive retro toys have been really popular, but also uh, like the yeah. back issues don't last long when we get them in. Uh, we're going through a lot of the reprints of the classic stuff. And, uh, but also like the, the new series has been gaining readership as we go and like a couple of younger kids getting into it, which is kind of neat to see too. Hmm. Is that, is, I was going to say, is that, um, is that um, the, the, the people that are getting into the current run, are they tend to be younger readers or just a mix? Like you really just can't. A mix. Some of it is people coming back to it. Uh, some of it is people getting there. Like there's, we've got one family that come in. It's like a dad and his two kids and they're all super into uh, just the X-Men and Ninja Turtles and a bunch of other stuff. But the kids are stoked on Ninja Turtles. Like they actually just saw the movie for the first time and they loved it. But uh, they've been scooping up all the IDW issues and uh, just everything they can get their hands on. They're losing their minds over the last Ronin. Oh man, yeah. That's a pretty big book, it seems like. It's like selling amazingly and like breaking these records. Probably, I wonder if it's getting people back into it, you know? Yeah, I, I was really excited about it at first, but I'm kind of been increasingly disappointed because I really would have liked won our team on it. I don't know. I find like when we get to the Eastman pages, I'm always like, that's what I want it to all look like. I know. I know. The, too much by committee, I think. And that's just not really what I'm into these days, but it's well, and also point. there was that, you know, it was supposed to be, um, shoot, what's his name at first. And then something happened and he wasn't on the book anymore. Yeah. It was Andy Kuhn, wasn't it? Andy Kuhn. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I was looking forward to it. I don't know what happened there, but uh, it just sort of seems like with every issue, there's been more and more artists on it. They seem been to be really. <laughs> wasn't there a guy that did a bunch of covers for them too that they didn't end up using and they just kind of left them like hanging out? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because there is get, like a thousand variants for each issue. I get the I get the Eastman covers, so I don't know. That's the only ones I get. This guy did a bunch of covers uh, like for them, like four or five covers, and he's selling them for like fucking like two grand a piece. Damn. And they just didn't end up using them. I don't know if they paid him for it or what, but he seemed a little down. It is kind of like something that like they're doing with turtles and, and getting off the, the variants, but having the different um creators do the different time periods and the different like they did it with the Batman Turtles volume three where they brought in like the Eastman turtles drawn by Kevin Eastman, you know? Right. But, but because, you know, it's different time periods, you would think like, cause it's like Ben Bishop and then Kevin Eastman. And then, then it's also um, the main guys. It's like a brother and like two brother team or something. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I was just curious. I mean, I, 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 I never, I never got into the turtles at all. I think I've seen one episode of any of the cartoons they've had. Never saw them. My son got me into getting it around issue fifty-six, and I've been collecting it since then. Hmm. The and I'm not, around. and I'm not the target market. I think there's a lot more action going on. And I had to like figure out like, who the hell's this character? Who the hell's character? Hey, who's this guy? Hey, who's that guy? And then after about a year, it started like making sense. Um, oh, yeah. But I was just kind of curious because. 
you know, I, I think it's a well-made comic book. I think it's been, it's sort of like a, when a hard rock band, uh, to use a weird analogy, when a hard rock band all of a sudden makes an album that's kind of more mellow and you're like, uh, okay, it's not bad, but it's not why I came here for. <laughs> yeah. That's lately what it's, that's what lately what it's been like. It's like, okay, that kind of thing. Yeah, like when your favorite metal band puts out an album of just ballads, <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, or like, or like, or like when like, um, you know, like like some bands like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna come up with a new different style, and you listen to the same style, and you're like, uh, okay, it's it's all right. I mean, it's nice that you changed, but like, you know, okay, that's not why we like you necessarily. Like, the, the, <laughs> yeah, I I mean I think Sophie Campbell, I think problem with part of the art is that she some of this, she writes all the stories and she draws some of them, but I think she's like, I think it's hard to like write and draw a monthly book. Oh my god! I mean, very few guys like like I remember reading like like no no Van Skyver was reading John Byrne Fantastic Four, and he says I never got into this. There's nothing ever appealed to me, but this guy was able to write and draw a book every month for the longest time and i want to understand how he did it <laughs> so he yeah, was reading yeah. more than he, one book at a time for a while too because he was still i think doing avengers when he started on uh, ff too maybe even yeah a bit. yeah so i mean it's like it's like that that sort of thing so i think like she's like it's like joelle jones joelle jones is doing wonder girl and she's writing it but she can't the book's gotten behind because she's gotten behind and and so now they've had other artists and they've had that issue and they're going to bring in like a new artist on this issue number six. But the problem is, is that like, like with Sophie Campbell, it looks, the book is better when she's drawing it. And, and the book is better when Joel Jones is actually drawing it. So it's sort of like, oh yeah, we got, okay, she, she's doing, oh, you know, you open up like, oh, she's doing the art too. Great. And then next issue, somebody else, you're like, uh, okay, a little yeah. different tempo. Yeah, that's sort of what led to a lot of my disillusionment with the big two is because you can be humming along, enjoying a book, and then whatever happens, and then suddenly you got to buy two or three issues by a creative team or an interested in it or whatever. Like, I just, I, I find I'm gravitating more and more towards comics by the fewest amount of people possible. Like, a writer and artist is good. A writer slash artist is even better for me. I don't know. Just uh, less uh, layers of interference, I guess. And yeah, I, I agree. I'm sorry. I was gonna say less possibility for a fin and fill in too, like uh, I don't know, nothing yeah. against filling issues, but you just kind of want an, an uninterrupted streak if you can, you know. Yeah, okay. and and I think it just it just it's just a different flow. It's like you you had it going one way, and then it's gonna be another way, and that kind of that kind of deal. And and, and I agree. So I was like, I was just curious because I I like the turtles book, but sometimes it's sort of like all right, like we need a fight or something like you're building you're building up to all this stress something needs to happen and so they give you little pieces here and there but you know hopefully you know maybe it's working for them maybe they're selling i don't know if they're selling more books or not but it's that thing that if like they end up getting higher interest overall and selling more books they probably won't change yeah yeah, I often wonder how much of that is editorially driven too, like, and then driven from a corporate level higher up, like these stories need to be drawn out longer so we can do a thicker collection because they're going to sell it on Amazon for 40% off. Yeah. So then like a six page, a six, six story arc becomes like a year long crossover. I don't know. No, you, there's, a, there's a really, that's a really good point because like, like I was talking, I was talking to somebody about like, I don't read Batman, but I was, I read, there's a, the, the, the book Nightwing. And it's this crossover tie-in to this Batman event. And I was like, man, I haven't read Batman in two, two years at least. And I don't miss this. This is the same crap template they have for the past few years. Either, either the Joker's a homicidal maniac, um, someone's going to poison the water or put fear gas or something, or um, it's it's a adults only title it's like check the box it's like oh page two and three is the page spread this that and everything it's like it's just check the box and it's like you know that's editorial saying this is what people want yeah <laughs> maybe they may but you know they don't realize that you know maybe you give them a little something different they may actually say hey this is cool it's like people don't want to take chances sometimes that's why i mean as i've gotten older i mean recently the past two years i like the smaller publishers the same thing with that because it's like 
you're not having guys who really don't have a clue in the creative process making these decisions that you can kind of tell like why are they doing this it's like this gotta be an, you know sometimes you read something you're like this gotta be an editorial thing because like this makes no sense mm-hmm. you know and, and so i was just I'm, thanks for answering that question i'm just more curious about it's selling because i i think they are trying to go to more like a younger crowd like not trying to appeal to the older readers which mm-hmm. i think you kind of have to do for longevity but in that interim it's like you may lose some old readers and you hope you get new readers. Yeah. But you can always go back and say, oh, the turtles are back in action and then get the old readers again if you have to. Yeah. But like you were mentioning issues where like nothing really happens. And I always see that and it boggles my mind. I think like if you plunk down your hard earned money to see a diehard movie and nobody shot anybody and nothing blew up, you'd ask for your money back and you'd be right to do so. Right. Cause you know, that, that's why right. you come to like an action comic book, like a, like a teenage mutant Ninja Turtles. Like I want to see people fighting with ninja weapons. I don't want to see them talking for 24 pages. So I feel like sometimes that people lose the point of what they're doing. And they think of it as like a chapter in a novel where it's like, no, 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 this is an episode of a TV series. Stuff has right. to happen. It has to have an arc within it, you know, it can, can be continued for sure, but you got to feel like it is a complete experience on its own too. So. Yeah. This is why a lot of times I don't get a lot of monthly books because I had an epiphany like two and a half years ago. And I was like, what the hell am I spending three ninety nine four nine on my a month on? And I dropped almost every single book. And now for me to get like a month, like a floppy, it has mm-hmm. to be something that I really dig. And I have like a two, I have like a, I have like a three issue rule. <laughs> like if, if after three issues, it's like, okay, forget it. I'm, I'm dropping the book. If, if it starts, mm-hmm. Because it's like uh, something that Jim Rugg said when they were talking about um, monograph by Chris Ware. Mm-hmm. He was talking about like how Chris Ware is talking about his life and there's his life in that book. And he's like, this is why I don't, why he's like, he doesn't like read most monthly comics because like Chris Ware cares, but you know, these guys, all these guys doing monthly books, they don't care. And if they don't care, why should I care? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, go ahead. What's ever going to happen to Batman or Spider-Man that's ever going to be like permanent, you know, like, you know, he, people get mad, like, oh, they changed who's wearing the Spider-Man costume. I'm going to send a death threat to the writer or whatever, but ultimately it all snaps back. So like, a, there's not much point getting mad about it, but B, there's really no inherent drama because you know nothing can happen that's too serious. So after a while, I'm like, well, why would I want to keep reading this? It's never going to change. Like, it's going to, it's a story that just goes on and on and on forever and will go on long after I'm not around anymore. And I don't know. Yeah. I'd rather read something where there are some stakes, maybe. I do think <laughs> that's part of the appeal of those books, though. Whoa, is whoa, whoa, that whoa. In the long run, you know, you're getting you know what you're getting when you go and you buy a Batman book. Yeah. And I think that for a lot of people, especially nowadays, especially when you're thinking about comics as like escapism style entertainment in a chaotic world, I think that there is a draw to characters where you know the world that they inhabit and you're not having to take those chances now i'm not making a value judgment on that based on you know if that's something that people are really into or or if that's you know something that should affect the way that books are made but i do think that there is a place for that kind of book and i think that that's why you see batman and superman stories you know 75 years into the character because yeah there's nothing that you can do hush please there's nothing that you can do that sorry i've got a i've got a dog that's half pug he talks all the time um like i think that there's a certain segment of the population i mean to boil it down that enjoys having characters that they're more familiar with Oh yeah, and I get it. And I, I say this and I'm a total hypocrite because every couple of years I get sucked back into the big two and what's going on there. And I always keep my eye on it, but I, uh, I don't know. I just found lately I've sort of, and I certainly don't begrudge anybody that's enjoyed it. I just find personally lately, I just don't feel totally. like, like I say, like the stakes aren't there for me because you know, no one's ever, right. gonna, the toys all have to go back in the toy box at some point for the next. The yeah. Inter- yeah, I, I, I missed that. that being done that DC is doing is like Batman black and white, Superman red and blue. Yeah, exactly. Wonder Woman black and gold. You know, like all those are 
interesting books with a different take on you know the character and with eight page stories i mean like i think it's a lot more like i like picking those books up personally mm -hmm. you know like those for me are, are interesting because it's something i don't always have a, even the time to like read an entire floppy book when i sit down you know so it's like an eight page story is is worth getting and i like seeing them showcasing new or different artists if that yeah, makes sense I like that too. Have all been great. Like the the uh, the Deadpool, like uh, I think it's Black, White, and Blood. Those have yeah. the, at least the two issues I have are are fucking great too, man. Like they are a lot of those good. Uh, um, and titles lately have been really good. the The latest crop of Black Batman Black and White was great, man. Mm. Like those are some of the only titles from the big two that I read. There is some interesting stuff coming out too, like Daniel Warren Johnson's Beta Ray Bill miniseries was awesome. I, uh, I have every that, issue. Silver Surfer Black, good. I thought was really cool. Uh, just yeah, Daniel that. Warren Johnson is fucking great, man. Like, oh yeah, he uh, he has a story in Deadpool, the second Deadpool, Red, Black, White, yes. and Blood, and I've never read any of his work. This is the first time I read his work, and I was like, this is a pretty good story. He wrote and drew it, and I thought you, you should check out his work, Ray. I think you would dig it, man. Yeah, everybody knows. There's a lot. He does a lot of that, like his his fight scenes are also very wrestling influenced, and I think you would like that too. Okay, I'll, I'll, that I'll dig because like he's um, a big just, yeah he's a he's a huge wrestling fan. Yeah, I, oh, they I let like people him. do I like whatever already. they want when they let the creators do whatever they want with the character, and they already have like a strong voice. Then it's like really interesting. And I think that's what like he did with Better Real Bill. Like he did a. He did a, a series for uh, DC, uh, uh, Wonder Woman, Dead Earth for Black Label that was fucking great too, man. He, yeah, I think it was good. about two years ago. Yo, man, that series is totally yeah. worth it. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I, I'm going to be completely straight up. I know that people make fun of it because of the Batman D, but I love Batman Damned. I thought that was awesome. I think Lee Bermejo was born to draw batman now i don't think he needs to draw batman <laughs> for every book but you know I, you know i definitely and it's there's been batman and, and superman and all those characters there's they're far from my favorites you know obviously i go to like the indie section is where i live at my local comic shop but like I'm still going to go. I'm still going to look and see if they're doing interesting stuff because occasionally you'll get like a King Conan that has like Kevin Eastman pages in her. Exactly. Or something I, like I, that, always, you know? I, I, whenever I go to the shop, dude, I, I grab my, my books that are in my pull list, but don't ever not look at the, the new release shelf because I'm like, maybe I'll take a chance on this today. Like I always look at the new release shelf and chances are like most times I at least pick something randomly out, man, you know? And if, it, if it's something that sucks and like what, I mean, I'm out five bucks, but like, I mean, it's kind of worth the gamble. A question, Dave, <laughs> like, like uh, oh, sorry, Dave, I was gonna ask in your store, do those like, um, I would say anthology comics that everybody's doing now, is it like one sold well, so everybody's trying to do it? Or are they all selling well? Like, uh, you know, some sell better than others. Obviously, Batman sells the best out of all of them. Uh, right. The Wolverine one did really well. Like, like Wonder Woman and Superman have been good, but not as big sellers. Like, there's a Red Sonia one, which is obviously a much smaller uh, readership than those guys. But yeah, it does depend on the characters. But they're they all generally seem to be doing well, so I don't think they're going away anytime soon. I hope. No, I no, I no, I've actually I liked it because like they have like like I said, they have allowed a lot of these guys to like do something interesting. Yeah. Like the second issue had a story that was I, had, I saw a laugh from it. I'm like, oh, Dave Lamb's gonna draw a book, and there was like him and his yeah. wife were writing the story, and I was like, oh man. But it was a good was, story, uh, and the yeah. art was fine. I thought they were but, it, but, it, drive, but it was too. a tease. But it was a tease. You know, it was like. I saw a laugh and I was like, oh yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, it's a good story. But it was, and, and, and it's a good story in the art fit. But I, I, I get, you know, because sometimes I wonder, do, are they doing these because they all sell well or because one or two sold well? And, you know, in comics, like all these publishers, the main, I mean, big two, they're like, they like just, it's like when you had WWF and WCW, one does something, then the other one copies it. And then the other else, and they copy it because it works. And they're trying to like, um, 
um, make, you know, the trend just to like catch the trend, you know? Cool. And then like, like I always laugh when like Cap Steve, the Cap when they kill Steve Rogers, Marvel kills Steve Rogers and DC decided to kill off Batman. And then by the yeah. time they killed them off, they brought, they were bringing back Steve Rogers to life. And I, and I was telling a friend, like I imagine DC, the, Tori the Grand Morse is like, fucking hell. I just killed them. Now I gotta bring them back, <laughs> you know, because you gotta bring them back because you're bringing back Steve Rogers, you know, and 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 so it's like it's like they 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 tend to like copy each other, and I'm kind of curious, always curious, like does that work or is that they're just gonna like ram it into the ground until all the water's taken out of the well? Yeah, I don't know. It's very funny how petty they get with that stuff. Hey, like the one I always think back to is uh, when Secret Invasion was being published for, by Marvel. DC, out of the blue, not related to any of their events, did a reprint, like, a, a, for the first time ever, a trade paperback of their series Invasion from 1988. And on the title, it said Invasion, and then underneath it, it said Secret No More. <laughs> you guys, what the hell is this? Is this the eighth grade? What's going on? You know, and then, like, similarly, when uh, DC was putting out Identity Crisis, which was all this hype building up to it, leading up, Marvel released a series that was, I think, supposed to be called, like, sinister six or something like that but at the last minute it got changed to identity disc and it came out the same day as identity crisis and it all revolved around some dips with identity. just like little petty like jabs like that just trying to siphon a little bit of heat off each other so i don't well, know because I, re I remember like when dc america yeah because i remember when dc like when rebirth was first published the first rebirth issue mm -hmm. and that day marvel released that that image of captain america saying hail hydra because oh, yeah. they were trying to suck all the uh, air away from DC's rebirth, but then it really like, but then it really like backfired because everybody was pissed that Captain America said "Hail Hydra." Yeah, and, but they were trying to be cute, like, "Oh, you know, you're not going to gain publicity. We're going to trump. We're going to trump you. We're going to go. We're going to do something that people are going to talk about us, yeah. not you." And it's like, yeah, they talked about Marvel a lot. They really, they really took a dump on that whole thing. Yeah. Well, do you remember when Marvel or DC was doing those ten cent adventures? Like they did Superman, the ten cent adventure, and Batman. Oh, yeah. the adventure. Yes. This was during the Jameis Casada years at Marvel. They put out the first Mark Wade, Mike Waringo issue issue of Fantastic Four was nine cents. Do you this remember was that? like in the late nineties, early early two thousand, early two thousands. Yeah, like yeah. two thousand, two thousand and one. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. And yeah, they put up the nine cent issue just to get that. And they're like, oh, you know, the little dig at the 10 cent. And we're a penny cheaper. Save a penny, kids. You know, <laughs> I will well, say at that time, Marvel was, Marvel was just trying to like get out of bankruptcy, man. They would have they were doing anything. <laughs> and unfortunately, yeah. that's when a lot of the cool stuff came out. Like they, did, they had a lot of good ideas during that time because they were desperate. Um, that's when Marvel Max came out. Yeah, and they were doing something. Some, some, what? Grant Morrison's like Marble Boy. That was the fucking crazy title, and that came oh, out yeah. during that time. Yeah, that was they were, that was when Marvel Max. Right, they were just desperate. I mean, the funny thing is, is like I met Max uh, Bill Jemis at a at a con, and he was like the coolest guy. Um, and then I didn't know afterwards. It's like, oh, he's hated by a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, I remember hating on him at the time. Like he really seemed like a villain because he was coming from the sports cards industry and he was really kind yeah. of a lot of that speculation back into it. And I remember when Ultimate Spider-Man sold so well, he was just kind of crowing about what a hot collectible it was. And we're not doing second prints. We don't do second prints. And now it's a collectible and just trying to drive that end of it. And it just drove me nuts. Uh, yeah, but but now the, the, the publisher. The, the ultimate line or, or the ultimate line or, uh, ultimately like it it did bring me back to comics. Like I had lapsed there for a few years and when the ultimate stuff started coming out, I came came back to comics and I didn't stay with the ultimate stuff for long, but without it, I don't know if I would have gotten back into comics. Oh yeah, no, they absolutely yeah. helped save that business for sure. And I mean, I think, I think that might like, be true for a lot of people. Kasada All right, y'all uh, hold up here. We got our next super special guests flying in all the way. Uh, we got Chris Pierce here from Comic Tropes joining us today to hey, chat and talk. Up? Thank you, Dave. We've got hey, a hi, arcade. Hey, everybody. Thanks uh, for inviting me. Yeah, man. Great to have you. Thank you. Yes, yeah. we've got a similar arcade in the back there. Seems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a little arcade game. Well, welcome, dude. Huge so great to have you. Yeah. Happy to be here. 
yeah, wow, I had no idea there was going to be so many people. I'm like look, trying to take it all in. It's <laughs> it's a lot. Sorry to join late. I literally just got home from work. <clears throat> Not a problem, man. Not a problem at all. No problem. Uh, Craig, take it take it away, man. Yeah, I'm so happy Chris is here. He's uh he's the reason why I came back to comics. Uh <clears throat> his show is uh is great. I love it. Uh some some of my uh yeah, just just brought me right back to comics, which in, in turn brought me but into kayfabe. Um, glad he's here. He's got a he's got a a lot to lot to share, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so glad you're here, man. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, Craig, thank you so much. I, I appreciate all your support, and uh, yeah, I've definitely been trying to promote cartoonist kayfabe with, you know, my channel since those guys got started. They, they they've got a fantastic channel. Um, what do they call it in wrestling terms, like giving the rub to the to the new guy or something. So I've always oh, yeah. like tried to sort of give some of that to like other uh, comic book like YouTube channels that I respect and cartoonist oh, oh. is way up there. It's, it's pretty awesome that they in turn brought like everybody together. Yeah, yeah, it's been neat. I think you have a really like a, a, a good history that people don't necessarily might not know that your history in comics, uh, even in making comics that you're, you know, you were up for an Eisner Award, a co-Eisner Award, if I'm correct. Yeah, uh, for, yeah, that's true. Let's Don. see. Uh, I've got like all, all sorts of comics to my side, but um, I yeah, worked on, among other comics, this one. It's called Trickster, and it was all written by like um, actual Native Americans about their tribe's version of a um, of their their trickster legend. And I, I got selected to illustrate one of the stories in here. I don't know if I can still find it. This was a while back, though, just to be clear. And uh, it was up for an Eisner. So I think, I don't know if it's been 10 years, but it's it's been something like that. Yeah, I can't, I, okay, there's mine. Um, yeah, you give so much back to the community, too. It's it's great. Yeah. Yeah, so so anyway, that was, that was definitely fun. So yeah, I definitely tried to, uh, I've, I've dabbled almost, you could say, in comics. I, I've, I've, I've done lots of self-publishing and you know sat sat in at comic book stores for 24-hour comic book days and things like that anybody here done anything like that like 24-hour comic book day Not it's on our list hour. i think uh i think eli and a couple of us yeah. have planned to kind of do a virtual one but we're kind of waiting and i think that's uh, a cool idea a virtual yeah. one like yeah there's something to be said about the camaraderie of, and like support it's it's it would be a tough 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 thing to do all by yourself yeah if you can do it in person with a couple people a yeah. little better but even virtual like that would be huge uh i've done those a few times so yeah and then like uh proofread a lot of comics if you've ever read stuff like um invincible or walking dead those were all books that like i i was just a proofreader on for the whole run yeah yeah i was i was gonna get to that too but yeah you have a long history of of you know and i and i love the fact that that you're constantly like making content and supporting i know we sent you a copy of image grand design which was i made. know thank you so much for that that thing was amazing <laughs> pretty much uh, all uh, that was all done virtually it was like a virtual bullpen there was about and, of us. and you know what's funny is like you know um when i started like collaborating with people and meeting people that was around 90 98 99 and it was like back in the day before real social media we had like forums and we would do like, you know, collaborative projects and stuff like guys like, you know, Robert Kirkman, for instance, and, and like other uh, people that have become pretty successful artists. But it took us ages to get work from each other. And you guys like did this like so fast. That's what was impressive to me. In retrospect, it seems fast, but <laughs> no, it <laughs> was. It Trust me. Like, I know the pro, like, how long any comic can take to make and like having that many working parts for the, for so many people to come through on time. Just amazing. A will, really impressive project. Thank you. I will say this. I've always said that like, I came across you when I was in school, I'm sure you remember. And I would, it was in on October and you were doing um, like Inktober every day. Yeah. yeah. And I had some really heavy projects and like, it was constantly, you were on all day and all night because I was getting into your back catalog and then joining you live at night and I was working on stuff so it was like really motivational it was like feeding you know just kept me going kept me going and it, yeah. and it was uh, such a big help um when 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 I was uh doing those projects um that's so I think, cool 
I think a lot of I think a lot of people don't get to see or or realize what you put in you know what I mean and I think it's it was important to have you here so that you know people could kind of get to know you because you're always on the other side you know what I mean and uh, right you, yeah. yeah you just see the facade the host and stuff like that but yeah and you're you know and recently some of the interviews you've done um which have been great as well um but yeah so, so what do you interviews. yeah you you recently lettered a book too if I'm not mistaken right like you you had done that's some that's right you know what, like that, that's awful that like it wasn't coming to me, but thank you for saying that. Like it's, I, I love getting promoted because I, I rarely promote my own stuff and I, I've got it in here somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was so nice. There's this um, writer from like the Scandinavian, Daniel Karhunen, and, um, and he wrote this really fun comic called Loxor, which is all about transforming robots not it's legally distinct from transformers <laughs> but like the, there's a fun like um mystery behind it where like a private detective robot has to figure out why they all lost their ability to transform and it goes on an adventure and he just hired me he's like oh i hear, hear you've like lettered stuff before i was like it's true and you know he, he offered to pay me a page rate and i'm like yeah I'll... i'm easy guys like you know i i'm I'm busy, but like if somebody offers me paying work in comics and that can get me, uh, you know, the ability to apply for a pro pass uh, at, at a convention, I'll, I'll take that work gladly. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I'm again super excited you're here because I, I love you so much. Uh, I don't even care how much of a fanboy I'm being. Um, any future, any future plans on making your own book or? or you know reaching out because you're you're a hell of an artist too i don't think i don't know if people realize that like i've got some of your original artwork i got a snake pliskin you did uh oh yeah 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 i i love i love your stuff um any any uh plans on just like uh, not for and... drawing per se but i also like writing a lot and um uh i didn't go too into detail on my show about this but um i got sick with covid uh earlier this year and it was bad. It was like real bad. It was scary. Um, and it was frustrating too, because like, I was like, so careful. Like my fiance and I didn't even go out and see our family, let alone friends. We had all of our food delivered, but I did have to go to work and I probably must have gotten it somehow at my day, day job. I was like two days or three days from like being able to get my um, vaccination shot. That stuff, like whatever, I'm talking too much about myself, but um right here having that close call like made me like sort of be like ah i want to get back into it like really produce something so i've been writing um i think i've got a really cool werewolf story that i i need to hire an artist for now and like get like a formal pitch um it's a weird line craig when like um you're sort of uh you know trying to be a host and like critique comics but then you're sort of potentially interested in making some yourself like i don't know where that line gets drawn like you know am i still objective if i make comics myself but i think i've never tried to hide the fact that i've done a little bit and i think it just gives me some insight into the process i think so i think it helps because it's like you know you know the process so it's like it gives you the ability to like i i hadn't made a, a comic book like of any like substantial you know what I mean I've, I've always tattooed and yeah. went back to school and then getting it like the image grand design were my first pages and it's like it's a whole nother perspective when you're you know what I mean when you're doing it and it opens up kind of things for you and, and it lets you you know what I mean see what's going on yeah I agree and like you know you were like oh Chris you draw and it's like I do but most of my like if I do a live stream or something, I'm really usually just sketching a pinup or inking something that I already drew. It's, and that's fun. And you can like learn certain techniques from it. And, and it's like just fun for me to like draw and talk to, to my audience every once in a while. But um, drawing sequential pages is a really different beast than just drawing one cool character or one cool thing. For sure for sure yeah. that's 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 exactly like that was i the, don't know how how much like you know when it comes to sequential storytelling I, I i don't know that i'm any great shakes i like drawing i like drawing but i don't know that i, I i'm super confident about my drawing 
that was tough for me too because it's like for tattooing it's always one image that looks great so then now it's like morphing into like being able to tell a story so for that igd stuff i just took like a kirby story that he covered on and i just replicated that's like that whole layout because it was like i wanted to make sure that it you know it looked well and it flowed properly but i, I learned that's smart i think that's smart there's that famous uh wally woods 22 panels when you don't know what to do and he's like yeah you know just copy this layout you know like that that's interesting that's dynamic you know um there, there's like this thing like you know uh oh getting overly referenced stuff can start to just look stiff but like copying good ideas i mean comics are built on that exactly right yeah. exactly so that's that's interesting to hear so have you got any artists in mind because i can think of one right away that i think would would work well for you i haven't gotten that far but i'm very curious to hear what your suggestion i would i would have said more uh, uh more you know, that uh tony oh tony tony yeah. uh trust me i'd love to work with tony great friend um uh but boy i i don't know i mean like you know his time is definitely worth a lot and i pay a great page rate but i don't know if i can meet tony's page rate i don't even with a friend discount i don't know that, that's an interesting question i've I'd never even have thought of like approaching him in that way Werewolf story, it seems to fit, you know what I mean, in my head at least. He know. does do great at horror. I mean, people, of course, know like Walking Dead, but he's done some other great like uh, posters and images. Tony's, you know, the cool thing about Tony Moore's art, there's a really underrated series now that I'm thinking of it that he did uh, through Vertigo called Exterminators. That was pretty horrific. It was all about like people literally fighting against bugs and stuff like that. Not monstrous bugs, literally just bugs, because <laughs> bugs can be pretty gross stuff. And oh my God, the research that he would do to get stuff like accurate. Uh, he has looked at a lot of cadavers and stuff like that. And he showed me just like a snippet of the stuff he was looking at. And I was like, wow, man, that's it's pretty hardcore. It's pretty hardcore to like be okay. Like looking at some of the stuff he decided to expose himself to, to get things like Walking Dead and Exterminators sort of accurate. I, I love that though, like when an artist like commits to their research and like <laughs> it draws something energetic out of them. Yeah, I, I think uh, you, you can tell that he's definitely studied anatomy when you're looking at that Walking Dead. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah. No, Tony's had formal art training. He he was like you know like a credit or two away from getting some sort of art degree. He can paint. He can do everything. It's really impressive. Yeah, he's he's a really impressive guy. Underrated. So you're not necessarily doing weekly drops anymore, am I right? It's it's kind of sporadic a little bit right now. Uh, for my show. Your show, yeah. So yeah, it, it it got to be a little too much for me to do weekly, but I YouTube YouTube punishes you if you're not regular. It it also punishes you if you're too regular. They've got an algorithm, and that's first of all why I don't do Inktober every every day of October anymore. I loved doing that. And when my channel was in its infancy and growing, it helped. But then you get to a point where you're like, you know, I would release a weekly video and we'll just say like, you know, it got 80,000 views or something or 50,000 views, you know, like got, 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 got a good amount within that week. And then you release daily episodes where only like three to 5,000 people are watching. And YouTube's like, oh, people have lost interest. So, so they stop promoting your regular videos so it's this it's this stupid game you sort of have to play with youtube um and not putting them out weekly has also probably like slowed my growth like my channel is growing but not as fast as like it did when i released weekly so i i've actually made the decision like um in a week i'm going part-time at my day job and i'm going to commit to like youtube like as my full-time i'm sort of making that swap so that i can like hopefully go back to releasing like in-depth weekly episodes that's my goal oh wow just uh this is the big big reveal is it we did it here i guess so yeah well i mean yeah yeah actually like i, I mentioned it to my patrons on patreon but i don't think i've posted that or said it publicly anywhere so yeah there's a there's a what a scoop the there comic tropes youtube guy is going to do a few more youtube episodes <laughs> you guys got it you got the scoop the exclusive that's 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 you know what though that's that's really that's really good to hear because it's like like I know what you do for your day job and stuff, but 
any day job, being able to like get away from that and be creative more. Like yeah. I'm really blessed with what I do. I'm so, I'm so blessed and I, and I love it. But being able to be creative at all the time, it's like, like, it's, it's so nice. There's like, it's a different kind of stress. You know it, what I mean? It's work, but it's work that you can appreciate if you've ever had to like, you know, work a, a hard job or something. You're like, yeah, this, this is better than the alternative. I think that helped like a lot, like with my mental health too. Like I know, you know, I don't talk a lot about that stuff, but it's like, you know, when you're constantly creating, like sometimes you can get down in the dumps, or whatever, but not having to deal with that daily grind and mm. being able to, to just create and sometimes just be able to say to yourself, like, what the fuck do I have to complain about? Like I draw pictures for a living. Like I'm so, I'm so lucky. And, I, and it's nice to hear that you get to do that too. To, it's to it's an still extent. hard work. You know, I have yeah. so much respect for comic book artists. Like those guys like are slowly like ruining their backs and their hands and their eyes and stuff for us a lot of the time you know there are good habits and there are bad habits and everybody works differently but a lot of you know there, there can be some serious physical um results from being a full-time cartoonist it's a it's a tough road um hopefully it's better than you know having to tar roofs or haul pianos up and down stairs you know hopefully yeah yeah no, that's, that's really good though. I'm, I'm, ha I'm really happy for you. Like, that's Thank really you. Cool. I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, like I say, I'm going part-time at my, um, at my up to now day job. And if it doesn't work, I guess I go back and do that, but at least I'll have uh, given it a shot and see if I can make it like, you know, doing a uh, YouTube, maybe full-time. That would and be I, nice. I'm excited to get those notifications every Sunday again. That's, uh, that's that would be nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's good. I appreciate that. No problem. Um, so anything else up on, I know like before COVID you were kind of talking about like going to cons and like hopefully trying to interview people. And I know this shit is like, you know, is that still on? Because yeah, that, yeah. That, you know, that I just made great. that tough decision. Like just like within like the last month to, um, to not go to New York comic con, I had my ticket and everything, but, um, and I always go, I've always gone to the New York comic con every year because one of my best friends from college lives in Queens and it's just something we've always done as a tradition since the very first one. And it was really hard, but I, I, I appreciate, first of all, the policies that Reed Con have, they, they're saying that you have to show proof of vaccination or um, a negative COVID test within something like 24 hours or something like that. I'm like, good, good. I still just didn't feel safe flying across the country right now if I didn't have to, if I didn't absolutely have to. So I made the tough decision not to go to that, but I, I might still go to my local convention. I'm in Seattle and, and Emerald City Comic Con is in a month. I've got tickets to that. So I love conventions, you know, um, and specifically Artist Alley, just because of the passion on display there. <laughs> You know, these days you can get like, you know, most comics or trades almost anywhere online if you have to, but, you know, comic book store or wherever. Um, but Artist Alley is, is a unique beast that, that's not as easy to um, just sort of like meander through and find uh, passion projects by, by all sorts of creators and find out what's what's going to be the next big thing, maybe. Was it, I, I, if I remember correctly, it was kind of a plan that you would hope to do some work at cons like maybe interview people if i remember correctly is that still if do, if i'm yeah. sorry you broke up slightly from on my oh, end did you say I, do interviews yeah do I, if, if i remember correctly you were speaking about possibly doing interviews at cons if i could this is a couple years ago i now. think it was like yeah i think i've like floated that as sort of like a long-term goal that i would be interested in like doing like you know um and i think i based that on like before i was ever doing like a youtube show for like eight years, I did a, um, a podcast about genre TV shows, you know, the things like um, Game of Thrones and Doctor Who and Lost and all that kind of stuff. And I would um, each week, in addition to sort of like talking with my co-hosts about the news of the week and like, you know, reviewing episodes, I would always do one interview with like a writer or an actor or something from that show. And I really got to like it. And when I went to the conventions, I would like, you know, that would be something I'd do for a few hours is I'd, you know, be able to get FaceTime. And, and I love doing interviews. I, I love trying to dig in and, and hopefully try to ask some like non-standard questions. Like, I don't know, just try to get more into the creative process or like a personal story or something like that. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd love to do that. No, no specific plans, but 
if I have more time to do YouTube, yeah, I would like to do more uh, interviews and definitely conventions is one of the places where it's sometimes it's easier to get everybody together. I asked because it sounded like I was excited about that, like seeing you at a con face to face with some, some of the guy, like some of the creators and stuff. Because uh, that, that would that would definitely be fun. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I guess I guess of yeah, good point. So far, all the interviews I've done on my channel, and there haven't been that that many, but like so far, they've all been like this Zoom. Um, and some of that's a product of the day and age we're in, specifically right now. But yeah, I would love to do that stuff in person. I. I I don't really get intimidated doing stuff like that. So, I, I, and I think you can like sometimes form um, a solid rapport with people and, uh, and, and, and build more of a conversation instead of like a, here's the question, now I'll wait for the answer. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of late night TV talk show hosts. And I just like their style of like getting, getting a good story and like conversation going yes. with creators. I'd love to do that. No, I think my, 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 big big goal if if youtube like ever rewarded me enough by getting bigger is to do something like um what uh japanese creator naoki urasawa does um and i don't know if anybody here is familiar with monben that he does on nhk tv no, no, eli's nodding so at least yeah, one they talk about it on birthday. Birthday. it's like that talk attack thing they used to do back in the day and yeah mom been really cool french tv that was like had mobius and all those guys where it's like different creators right yeah exactly it, it's 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 almost like a mini documentary of um like literally visiting the person in their studio their workplace mm. um seeing like what is their workplace laid out like what tools do they use and asking a few questions in between talking to their assistants and um and looking at the finished products that's something i would love to do like you know i i i think i you know flatter myself by saying like i know at least a good handful of pretty successful comic creators that i think would be open and amenable to me literally visiting their place of work maybe once we get past covid and everything but um i think that that would be like oh, i don't know I don't know about you guys, but I think I would love something like that, like where you can actually visit, like you know, a creator's studio and see what they uh, see how they work day to day. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, no, that's 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 really interesting. That Look, would sort of be my ultimate goal of what I could do with this. I'm going to stop monopolizing this because I'm sure there are tons of people with questions. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, love your show. Keep going. Um, so glad. I love that. talking to you, Craig. I appreciate all your support. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm glad to hear you get to be creative a little bit more during the day. So keep it up and uh, we'll pass it on. Go ahead, Eli. Okay. <laughs> um, just uh, coming to you as like a fellow YouTube creator, a fellow uh, content creator type of dude. I'm just wondering what goes into your process about creating and doing the research for a project or for like a video, any of the ones you do. I mean, obviously, you're interested in something you obviously read comics you're surrounded there yeah. so like you just you just are you know something that you dig and then you're like let's let's take a deep dive and find out all the stuff definitely definitely like i always have a pretty thick list of ideas both for like maybe a specific comic and a lot of times for like a specific creator and i'm always reading comics so that list is constantly in a state of flux I, I feel like that's some, some, there's a very few comics that I'm reading just for fun. And I'm almost like, don't think about reviewing this. Just, just keep enjoying it for right now. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of stuff that I'm reading, I, I am sort of looking at maybe for a second time with a more critical eye going like, okay, if I was to approach this for a video, like what's the narrative here? Like a, a, of, or what does this creator do that's a little more unique or, or completely unique so so yeah i'm just constantly reading my books thinking about what what i could do if i were to do it that would at least make it different than either somebody else's video or if they haven't covered it yet maybe what why like what's the angle to make it interesting to everybody mm. um so those are some of the questions that i'm always asking and when it comes time to like deciding like this is what i'm gonna do that's like a big decision because now, then I, I do write like a full script for myself. And um, 
and then I'm scanning pages or buying digital copies. And like that, that's the part that takes forever for me. Yes. You know, like if we watch cartoonist kayfabe, you know, they'll grab a comic and they'll put it on the table and they'll sort of go page by page and talk about like all sorts of interesting techniques or take tangents and stuff. And I love it. But mine is a little bit more of like, I'm going to make a, a criticism or an observation. And I want to back that up by showing the appropriate images that relate to that. Right. Pulling those images can take forever. It, yes. it, it, that's, that's the longest, hardest part is like once I've actually recorded it, going and gathering all those images, it, it's, it's, it's back, back breaking work. It is not the fun part. <laughs> Yes, I agree. That's the same for the for when I do my Grendel cast too. It's easy to talk and chat about the comic in front of you, but then on the back end, you got to generate a graphic for each page and then edit the page. And you know that's that's the tough stuff. Yeah, now, you know what it's like. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. Uh, and you're lucky that you don't have a partner to blame and say, "Why don't you do some?" Just kidding. <laughs> no. <I love. laughs> you no. got to do it all. You know, but. Um, so what else? I mean, I, there's also, you've been doing it for quite some time and you've dug into so many, so many deep, dark holes and, and bright, beautiful holes as well. Um, what are, what are some holes that you haven't mined yet that you're like looking forward to or something that like you hold in such high regard that you're like, maybe I shouldn't go down this hole because well, I love that's, this. That's an interesting thing. I mean, I, I there probably is a reason why I haven't really done an episode specifically on something like, um, you know, a classic like Watchmen or something. First of all, there've been so many reviews, like what do I necessarily have? That's a new observation there. I, I, I do worry about something like that. And then there's some things that are, you know, yeah, I love it so much. There, a lot of episodes, I, I still will do them, but they take longer for me to almost like make that commitment. Like if I'm, uh, I'm trying to think of a book that I loved, uh, Bone. Bone was a book that I really loved by Jeff Smith. And that was one I just sort of kept putting off. Like I do research and stuff and I take notes, but like actually pulling the trigger was very hard because, you know, Criminal was another, like by, by uh, Brew Baker and Phillips. I, I, I really love them and I don't want to make a bad episode. I just don't yeah. want to, I, it feels different for certain things, certain things I really, really love. And I know going in that it's not necessarily going to be my most viewed episode. And that's fine. Like that, that part doesn't bother me. It's more of just like, how will I personally feel about like what I've assembled? Did I, did I put all of my thoughts out or did I forget something? And that drives me nuts when I like put out an episode and like two weeks later, I was like, Oh, it's like a whole huge section I could have gone on whatever maybe i'll do another episode someday but there's yeah. so many ideas that it's hard to get back to something yeah i feel you do you feel like you do like the movie thing where actors say i do like one for me and then one for them one for me and one for them type thing oh um a little yeah that's so insightful um i i definitely probably do most mostly for me you know what i mean because i yeah. want to be passionate about it like i the, the quickest path to failure would just be to like um you know, angrily review bad comics. Like I, I, I'm sure that that would get me a big hit. Or if I just wanted to sort of summarize something that I've got on, on, on the spinner rack that I like, I could do that. And I know that it, like YouTube would reward me and I could probably make a lot of money, but I personally would probably get burned out really fast. So I'm not really necessarily throwing shade on people that do their episodes like that, but it just, it doesn't interest me too much. So mostly I have to be passionate and, and I'll, I'll make a small caveat that like, you know, uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm trying to still monetize this stuff. So sometimes a thumbnail or a title description, you know, I, I don't know that I'm necessarily aiming for clickbait, but I am trying to hook somebody's interest. Like it, yeah. that, that's like, you know, as mercenary as I'll get. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to hook somebody's interest that maybe doesn't know anything about this topic. That's kind of the game. Like you said, you got to play with, uh, it, like with it is a YouTube. Game. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll say like all social media, including YouTube definitely rewards negativity. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's know, like, I the could fans. Put, like the problem with and like <laughs> yeah. list an artist. Um, I don't usually want to do that. 
Um, I want to be more, there's so many things that I love, Eli, that I want to mostly focus on things that I'm excited about and that I love and explain why I love them or why they work. Every once in a while, though, I do do something that I think is kind of dumb or bad to contrast. And I try to find the good still within it. But, you know, if I find a really goofy golden age book or, or something like that, like, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of rip it to shreds. Just yeah. I'm like, whatever. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right they're not trying to make a a, a place in I the hope industry I don't right now like, <laughs> yeah right trying to the have estate fun. of uh is gonna come after you well yeah. thanks so much uh thanks so much for being here chris and uh i'll yeah. throw it over to uh rick what's up what you uh what you got going on bud thanks for coming on chris glad to oh, have you man. my pleasure i really appreciate it uh man i i honestly I've been watching your channel so long. I couldn't even tell you what the first episode I was so that I first episode that I saw of you was, but, um, I've, I'm all like, like, okay. So when I start seeing your, uh, I start seeing your inking and I didn't realize you drew like, I this is, this is a while ago. I mean, I've just never talked to you. Yeah. Um, and I realized that you drew and I, that was such a trip because it's like, I, I mean, I've never personally seen any of your stuff like outside of like those sessions and everything, you know. And then I was wondering, like, so I'm like curious about your background, obviously, mm -hmm. um, with that sort of thing. And then the same thing happened when uh, you interviewed Robert Kirkman. I had no idea that you proofread any of those stories. And I'm really curious, like, obviously you have a relationship with him, but I'm really curious, like how that even like came about. Like, that's so cool. Uh, I had no idea until you brought that up and I've been watching your channel for years. So I'm well, like, that, that, really that's sure. kind of you, Rick, you know, uh, again, like the channel that I have, I figure is mostly to talk about comics. So I, I try not to necessarily just be like, and by the way, this is something I did. So like, I'm just as good. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to generally talk about myself too, too much, but um, to answer your first part of the question, I've just always drawn. Um, I didn't like, you know, go to art school, but um, one thing I definitely like to do whenever I can, it's been a little while since I've easily been able to do this, is I do love to go to any sort of live drawing sessions, like in my town or anything like that. Um, you know, sometimes that could be, um, what do they call it? Um, drink and draw. Yeah, drink and draws. I've done lots of those. I, I had my own group when I, I when I, I lived in DC for 10 years and helped <clears throat> form a group of cartoonists there. We met once a month at this huge bar um, and we would all just like draw and self-publish comics together. So that was fun. I would consider that a drink and draw. But um, what was I thinking? The thing that Molly Crabapple uh, started, what, what, what's that? Uh, all of a sudden, Dr. Sketchies. Dr. Sketchies. I like going to that, especially if I'm in like a foreign town or something like that. I've done that like in Tokyo twice. Like that, that's just so fun to like meet up strangers and just draw together and have a drink. Um, so I've always drawn no, no real formal training per se though. Um, but to answer your second part of your question, like uh, at least about Robert specifically, um, I've always, first of all, read plenty of Indian self-published stuff. And Robert put out a book called Battle Pope. That was the first real thing that he ever published. And I want to say that was, it was either 99 or 2000, somewhere early like that. Maybe probably more like 99, but I, I, it's hard to remember now. That's a long time ago. And um, I picked up the first issue of it and I liked it and I found a spelling error in it. And I don't know why, but like I emailed him and I was like, this comic's great. Like, I like this, I like this. Hey, you know, by the way, there was a spelling error, you know, no big deal, but like, you got this. And he was like, oh, all right. Well, uh, if you got so much of a problem with it, Chris, how about you, uh, how about you just start uh, reading all these issues and find me the mistakes? And so he just, ever since then, like from the, the, the end of the first Battle Pope series on, he, he emails me his pdfs and i i look them over at this point Amazing. you know robert's got a bunch of editors and people working for him so that that's not too big a deal anymore um but yeah for a long time i was like trying to help uh get that stuff and then he got mad at me once once i once i let the the word zombie get through in walking dead and he didn't want that word in there but he'd accidentally like written and it had been lettered and 
I didn't find it as a grammatical error, so I didn't catch it. And he was like, what am I doing this for? Why am I sending you these if you're not going to catch this stuff? <laughs> I was like, whatever, man. You know, I'm not getting paid or credited. <laughs> Funny. So, so like that just leaves like that leaves me super curious. Like, I mean, you showed that book from earlier, but like, what else have you done? Like, um, like with comics, like anything really? I'm just yeah, curious. I'm trying to see if I've got anything. Um, you know, you mostly it's been like um, I've got a few things. Give me two seconds. I've got, I've got a. I don't, I don't have everything that I've worked on or anything like that handy, but I've got a small pile of a few things. And it's like I said, a lot of it, a lot of it was more like um, self-published stuff. Um, when I worked with that group in, um, in DC, we were called like the DC Conspiracy and we would put together themed anthologies. Like we did a, a horror one. I was like a cover I made and I told a story or two in there. And we did one that was like about um, sci-fi and we did like uh, war and we would like publish like, you know, I don't know, a small like, you know, a thousand or a few hundred of these and we would each sell them at conventions. That was fun. Then we started like a free newspaper that we would like, um, I believe they're still making it actually, um, a free newspaper of like comics. And we supported that with just like... Um, ads and we would just give this away for free in dc so we did that for a long time too and then i've um just like you know been hired for more educational comics there was trickster i did like colonial comics volume one and two which are written by historians um and then just like maybe like you know the occasional sort of like pinup or backup story and a few other things i don't know how did you end up getting that how did you end up getting picked for that book um, just people that you know. Just okay. Comics is I wasn't, a small. I wasn't sure exactly comics was. is a small world, so it's more just like yeah, the guys editing it knew me and um, had like uh, for both Trickster and Colonial Comics, those were things where like the editor put a bunch of different artists as options in front of the writers, um, and they were like, oh yeah, that guy that that seems to fit my story. Oh shit, that's really cool, dude. Yeah, yeah, definitely fun projects, you know, like I'll, I love working on comics. So I've, I've, and I just want to like, I like comics so much, Rick, that it's like, I want to learn every part of them, you know, so I've done writing and drawing and inking, but I've also done lettering and coloring and uh, grayscale zipitones. And I've done like the, the, the actual printing and publishing, you know, like, or at least talking with publishers and stuff like that and printers to get it out so just sort of want to learn every aspect so that i can sort of build a respect for what's involved and, and understand each element of comics no i totally hear you dude like uh because i was asking i was asking our first guest about his uh about his sort of like um his process because like sometimes i can't really tell whether he's digital or traditional um mm. depending in like i really have a hard time moving over to digital at least for like inks in that aspect because i want to keep that right. that look you know that human touch i don't know yeah for the longest time i i actually had moved like almost exclusively digital um and i like the the look of what i was creating but i sort of missed the uh the, the tangible tactical feel of like um of inking i don't I think inking, honestly, is probably my weakest area in comics, but it's one that I like trying the most. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I could probably agree with that. Yeah. No, but thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate you coming on, man. I'm sure everyone has tons of questions. I appreciate the questions. Thanks, Rick. No problem, dude. Thank you. Our first guest is uh, Dave Hallett, the writer of this amazing book, The Makers. I don't know if you've heard of it before. But uh, makers, you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's, uh, no, who's that through? Uh, I think it's self-published, right, Dave? Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's, it's kind of like uh, Galaxy Quest meets the Image Founders. It's amazing. Wow. It's such a great. But we got to get you guys together to get uh, get him one there, uh, yeah. Dave. Yeah, yeah, I can make that happen for you. Yeah. Craig will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Ray, what's up, dude? Oh, of hey, course. Hey. hey, Chris, thanks for joining, and uh, good luck and and uh, going full time on YouTube and going part time. Thanks, Ray. That's so kind of you. Listen, just just a comment and a question. Um, I've recently yeah. gotten into Mobius. And so I looked up and I saw your episode that you did on Mobius. Now, before I saw that, I saw this hour and 20 minute or an hour and 30 minute French documentary that was aired on the BBC about Mobius. Yeah. And I saw your 30, your, your 30 minutes, your 30 more minutes was like 10 times more informative <laughs> than this French documentary. Um, I, I'm about, not familiar with the documentary, but thank you. It, it, I mean, it, it's okay. But like you talked about how in the airtight garage, how they're, how there's a lot of things that look like they're straight out the Star Wars lifted directly or it looks like they lifted a I lot. Think so. of them. Okay. I think so. Sure. Okay. Well, trust me. No, I saw it, but it was really informed about a lot of things. And you talked about the Mobius tropes, which, yeah. you know, I was really impressed because it's like, yeah, he's right. He's right. He's right. He's right. So I just want to tell you that that was really informative and helped me a lot to understand what he's doing with his art. So, but um, I, I just want to know generally do you have like a public speaking background or is you just have the gift of gab because I, i've seen you i've seen enough of your videos where it's like man this guy is just really good in front of the camera i mean you're, you, you I mean your enunciation is good your presentation is good you you have energy and enthusiasm you know how to time what you're saying so it's really not can. monotone i mean i'm not i'm not saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to like ask you for a loan or anything i'm just telling you that <laughs> Yeah, because because I, well, that's I, good because because I'm in debt. <laughs> we all are, dude. <laughs> we didn't understand. Um, but anyway, but I was just curious because you just it just really seems I know it's not effortless, yeah. but it just seems like it's done really easily. And I know it's not, but uh, I just wanted to know, or are you just just born with that ability? <laughs> I don't know that I was born with that ability. Uh, first of all, I would call myself an introvert by nature. When I talk to people, um, it's sort of like a, a fake it till you make it type thing. And uh, at the end of the day, like it leaves me feeling kind of exhausted, but I don't dislike it or anything. It's just that like small talk does definitely like sort of like tire me out. Um, what I did was uh, in college, I decided that I want like, uh, I wanted to be better at public speaking. Okay. Um, and I wasn't taking classes in that. Like I got my degree in this business. <laughs> what I did, Ray, was I um, I got into stand-up comedy. I just decided like to face my fear and like get up there and just do it. Um, and I and I enjoyed it. And so like I I didn't really continue down that path, but um, I definitely still made some really close friends that are still successful comedians and actors. Um. Probably the best known one would be uh, Dr. Ken Jung. If anybody has seen either The Hangover or at least The Masked Singer, like Ken is a good yes. friend that I'm still in touch with. Um, and 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 you know we came up doing like stand up together and improv and uh, and he stuck with it. And after I graduated, I was like, no, no, I I I got what I needed out of it. I wanted to like just be more comfortable talking in front of strangers. Um, and then I said like you know. It, it, it was um, an evolution. Uh, before I did YouTube, I was doing a podcast and right. I didn't have to be seen on that, but I was doing interviews, like I said, with like, you know, I got to interview Stan Lee or George R. R. Martin and stuff. And it was like, you know, that was like, it was, it was good training to, to speak one-on-one uh, -on -one with like, you know, people that you like respect and admire and stuff like that. But I didn't have to be seen, you know, I didn't have to put my face out there. And when I finally just sort of like decided that I'd done that for long enough, I was like, ah, what, do, what am I more passionate about comics? I like comics more than TV and stuff. And I was like, well, it's just me. So I decided YouTube was like uh, just the way of a podcast. I'm glad I did, but yeah. Thank you. No, no, you're very welcome. But um, yeah, it's, it's really well done. And you know, when you see these things that are like look really easy, they're not yeah it's not and i know there's a lot of work that goes into it but that's that's what impressed me the most because you know you, you can learn how to do the transitions and the uploading and you can do the technical stuff but the actual mm -hmm. execution that's hard right um, so right. i I, appre I appreciate that like a lot like man he's making it look easy but it's not 
Because you just know, you just know it's not. Some of that is editing, you know? I mean, I want to like, that's my time when I can like fine tune everything and hopefully, hopefully, like, you know what, when it comes out well, craft a story and a narrative. And, and, and that's when I can pace it out a little better and stuff like that. Um, so I, I, I don't love like all the scanning of the images and downloading images, right. but I do like the actual editing process of like shaping that story. And, and, you know, I have the ability to, you know, at least make myself look the best I can within that world. <laughs> right. Cause I'm like, you know, if you saw how much footage I shoot for like an episode, you know, like it, it's more than twice of what you see on oh, sure. screen. Cause I'm like botching lines and like uh, doing flubs all the time, but I get yeah. to cut all that. Right. But I'm, no, I so mean, I you look better. Yeah. But that's part of the process. I mean, how many bloopers, I mean, like, anybody seen blooper reels or you watch DVD, you know, uh, outtakes, it's like, you know, they screw up sometimes yeah. a lot. I've been tempted sometimes to like put it like at the end of the episode and then I'm like eh it's not like a blooper like you know like I don't know a boom mic hit me on the head out of nowhere it's like I'm just like saying the word wrong instead of like saying like Mobius I'd be like Moby BBBS and I'd be like it's not that funny really. <laughs> right no no I would keep it I think it's a good decision I would you know I wouldn't change the thing that you're doing it's it's a really nice polished um product at the end that's what kind of impresses me it's just it's the goal it's 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 really polished and, and, and there's a lot of comics content mine included that is not polished and and like getting it polished anything polished is hard but um just the fact that it's really polished is what to me is why it just kind of like separates it from most other stuff because it's at a certain level of care and polish and it's just every little thing is done well and when it's put together and okay edited fine and whatever but when it's put together it's like a synergy it's like two plus two equals five it's just to me it's just very polished and it's, and and, um, it, and so that's kind of like what struck me the most so i, I appreciate the questions this is not a this is not a you know i'm just i'm just being honest and if anybody you can ask these guys when I go call meds. I really need it. I'm not, I, don't, I don't throw them around, but it's, it's really polished, nice show, and um, that's valuable. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, it, that's it, valuable, even if it's like you know coming as a compliment. Just like your your, your comments about like you know presentation and, and polish is definitely. I'll I'll, t I'll 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 keep that in the back of my mind. Like oh okay maybe that's something I can, you know continue to either do well or or, or even fine-tune more I, I, I don't I know that. i don't know if you could change i don't know if you could change it but um i wouldn't i would maybe fine-tune it but you know I all think i can say is like when i say fine-tune i'm always trying to get a little better like hopefully right. like you know if this gets money i can get a better camera i can get better like audio equipment i can get better lighting you know like little changes like that and yeah okay cool all right well listen thank you for your time and for answering the questions and good luck and hope it thank goes you. well Sure. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll send it back over to Craig for a quick question from a absent friend who's still living. I'm sorry for my wording. <laughs> oh, okay. just someone who's not. <laughs> yeah, he's normally here. He's a big fan. Uh, his name's Kevin Delgado. He's got a an awesome book out called Tough Stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to get him to send you one. It's it's pretty wild stuff. But uh, he wants to know with with all your notoriety and connections in the business, why not make more comics? You obviously have a love for it. Yes. Okay. Sorry, you broke up a little. What about make more comics? He said, with all your notoriety and connections in the business, why yeah. not make more comics? You obviously have a love for it. Oh, why aren't I yeah. doing it already? Yeah. Um, you know, even when you have that like passion and have those connections it isn't always a slam dunk um so sure I'll, I'll peel back the curtain a little i have had pitches accepted at image that have fallen apart it's been a long time actually since like that but like i had two where both times the artists like produced some great pick pages and uh, you know, I got like at least a tentative sort of go ahead, not a contract, but like, like, yeah, like let's see some more. And then the artists just sort of flaked. So like things just fall apart sometimes, you know? 
And uh, at a certain point, I just had decided to focus a little bit more on just my day job, getting money and, and healthcare and stuff like that. Um, and hopefully I haven't put it, delayed it too long, you know, cause, cause I would like to, to, to make some more comics. Um, so hopefully that's something that like, you know, towards the end of this year or sometime in 2022, which sounds like the far flung future when I say that, but okay, we're, we're right on top of it. Like hopefully in 2022, I can put out some comics that, that, and see what, see if people like them. I think I've got some good ideas. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. No, thanks for the question. I appreciate that, Kevin. All right, we're going to go over to cover artist and just straight artist extraordinaire, the artist of such covers as Wizard Number One, oh, Image okay. Grand Design, and uh, his forthcoming work with Craig CK. Uh, what up, David Browers? How's it going, guys? What up, dude? Hey, David. How's it going, Chris? Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, man, uh, I've been down with you for a long time, but uh, you did the uh, awesome Liefeld episode, speaking of Liefeld, but uh, the Kirkman episodes were awesome. Um, I got a question for you, man. Do you have one of those, like, Kirkman boxes, like, where he collected that whole bo long box full of ca uh, cardiac? Do you have, like, some little fetish where, like, is there, what was your first comic? Yeah. That, what, what's your collector little bug? What's your collector bug? That, yeah yeah uh i you know the stuff that got me into comics that i had a lot of at one point was uh transformers it's kind of embarrassing now but i was like i was like 10 or 11 and i was really into transformers and that's what got me into comics is i saw transformers comics um so for a while it was that um but i moved across the country for a job about seven years ago a little more and I sold off almost my entire comics collection. I, uh, so I did used to have some interesting like things. I definitely had a lot of early Ninja Turtles too that I definitely regret like getting rid of some of that. Um, some stuff like, you know, you know, 70s and 80s X-Men and Spider-Man and Batman that I wish I'd kept, but I just couldn't keep it all. Instead, I've just sort of kept like a very small handful of stuff that like, meant something to me on a more emotional level or that like I worked on or something so like you know I still have some a, a small handful of like you know Daredevil and Wolverine type stuff that Frank Miller did that I loved as a kid um the tick that's about like I don't have a lot I don't have a very big comic collection anymore it makes it hard sometimes for when I'm doing my episodes uh David because I'll remember all sorts of stuff it's like this stupid like amount of trivia about comics is still in my head but then if i need to like actually like refer to an image or something i'm having to buy it again now mm. no gotcha man what about you like what do you have in your collection that's about, that, that you love oh don't even get me started chris really yeah like say that's your house is on fire and you can only grab something like one short box or something like what would be in it oh we gotta put out the fire man <laughs> it's too late it's too late yeah <laughs> no no Don't it, want to yeah. that. that's a that's a horrible question to ask me dude like, okay. like yeah i'll be throwing my dogs in front of the fire that's not but okay <laughs> yeah i know i just asked are... like the toughest question for any comic book fan i was just curious yeah. what kind of an answer i'd get you know a side note though, uh, homie, my good homie Craig there, man, he hooked me up with the Bone series, man. I'd love to see you. Uh, I'd love to see you do your take on that, man. I'm a huge Jeff Smith fan. That wouldn't be yeah, the first. Yeah, I, I, I did a whole um, episode about Bone. I love Bone. That's one of my favorite series. I, I, I remember picking that one up, uh, Cartoon Books number one. Um, that, was, that was exciting. I think I still have that, actually. That's probably one that I kept was Bone number one. I probably still have that somewhere. Yeah, right on. Yeah, do I see uh do I see a phony bone or something like that on your shelf over there? Under uh, the yeah. Phoenix uh, Comics. Is that is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, you yeah, that he's out there. He's that's out great. There. Yeah. No man, yeah, that's a 
Yeah, I got a, a bunch more questions. Like, what was cut from that Liefeld interview? What was, you know? But um, also, Dave Hewlett, that makers, Craig, also hooked me up with that. That's an awesome take, dude. I really enjoyed oh, thanks, that. Man. Glad you liked it. Yeah, man, it's really cool. Thanks. But that's yeah, I got, I got probably a ton more questions, but that was it. Yeah, I just wanted to. You're doing awesome stuff, man. I love comic tropes. So. Oh, that's so kind of you. You're doing awesome stuff too, and uh, obviously the uh, cartoonist kayfabe boys loved loved what you did too. So they, they definitely gave you a good shout out when they were reviewing uh, Image Grand Design. So more, keep it up. Yeah, we're part of the best army in the world, dude. So. I love right it. Thanks, Browers. Um, cool. Uh, anyone else got any questions? Or we'll kick it back to uh, myself. I could probably have another couple. <laughs> i'm sure craig does oh i didn't realize you also have the uh ninja turtles uh arcade back there oh yeah that's what i was saying at the beginning yeah i didn't notice that that's awesome and i of course like i can notice like eli when i look at you, you know your your wall i i you know there's mobius and there's some cool original comic art and stuff but what what's the it looks like you must also love music because i'm seeing like some stuff back there and i can't it's it's distant enough that i can't quite see what what am i looking at back there um, well, I'm a big fan of this band Ween. So Ween is I know the Ween. top one. Yep. I also do a Ween zine. I can't play. All I right. Can't. So um, I got a Ween poster that's like an old Fillmore poster. And then I have an old Fillmore poster that's Lenny Bruce and Frank Zappa and the Mothers. They played a show that's together. Awesome. Yeah. And then Richie Havens is one of my all time favorites. I got to meet him one time and uh, just shaking his hand made me cry, let alone the entire show i was like bawling my eyes out what's the photo that's like at the very bottom under oh, above the drum set is that a oh, photo oh, it's frank zappa it's frank zappa as well from he's just smoking a cigarette chilling out with uh one of the guys from the original mothers i'm a big i'm a big zappa guy so you guys are asking me questions but i'm always curious about each of you too hey man i'm always down to ask to answer your questions and talk about my walls yeah is this your studio that we're in it is yes i've got uh all the podcast spacious. stuff and hey it's it's all right it's a room it feels less mm -hmm. spacious when you uh are have all the floors covered with comics and the walls covered but see like some of these like let's see we've got like ray and craig each have like a digit like a fake yep, sort of background so i see. can't see their places and rick had like a really dark room so i couldn't see everybody so like i asked about like david like what was on his shelf and now i'm curious about your walls because i'm i i can't tell I, but i'm always curious like what kind of this is all cool, terms, like basically. art and stuff people have it's all like jim ma food and then ac oh Florida. right on some uh, two two original pages a kevin eastman one and a jim lawson one is the uh yeah the is that like Raphael with like the red in the middle or something is that jim oh uh, yeah that's that's a uh, um peter laird oh that's peter laird yeah that's an original last, piece of art you have yeah from one of the last rounds he was doing through mirage wow through steve levine from shellback artworks who also i'm a did. big ninja turtles fan like me too like i when i got into comics oh look at that that looks so familiar like it's two issue one or wait issue one issue two page one so i was answering like david's question earlier about like you know some of the the, the stuff that was valuable to me and stuff and i was saying how it was like yeah. you know kind of embarrassing because it was like transformers was like where i started and then i like you know was like looking at the racks and i tried like spider-man and batman and i liked it enough that i went to a comic book store and i'm old enough that like Ninja Turtles was still relatively new. And so like Ninja Turtles was one I got into pretty fast. Like I got into a bunch of cool black and white stuff that I I still like, oh, I don't know, when I see stuff by Mirage and First and Comico and like all those early publishers, I, I still get excited. Even if it's not like one of the best comics, that's just like, it just brings me back nostalgia wise. That's the stuff that excites me. But like Ninja Turtles, I don't know, like, like at a certain point as an adult, I had to like look back and go, oh, well, I haven't really kept up with the cartoon, but you know what? I still just love Ninja Turtles. And it like, just sort of like, yeah, I just love they're them. So, they're great. Uh, we were talking about the the ongoing that's going on right now, kind of uh, during the, during between guests. Are you reading that? Um, I'm, I, I fell behind and it's so frustrating. Um, 
I, my comics just aren't well organized and I need to figure out like where I left off so that I can pick back up again. Uh, like I, 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 I just like, I, I look at the trades and I'm like, wait, did I read this one? Or is this not the one that, I, or do I need to go back another one? So I'm still trying to figure out where I left off. Um, I am reading the last Ronin. That was easier for me to jump onto because I was like, okay, cool. The original creators are involved and it, here's issue one. So I am reading that. But I need to figure out where I left off on the um, IDW Ninja Turtles run. I have I have something here that I would run back into the house for if it was on fire. I've been meaning to send a, a picture to you. There's a little bit of a backstory here. David and I are creating a comic book uh, based on the the life of Rob Liefeld. Okay. Uh, Hi. David is about uh, he's about you know 20 hours away. He flew down to visit me to work on the book together this summer. And we went to the Beguiling, uh, which is Toronto's, it's, it's like a really, it's a special place. Our friend got us in, Jason Lapidus. Um, they are the ones that uh, host TCAF. Um, mm. So he actually got us in so we could dig through their, uh, their back issue uh, <coughs> uh, boxes. And they, I don't think they've had anyone in the store since COVID. So it was, it was a really big deal. Oh, but right. We wow. There. While wow. we were there. Um, as we were digging, I hope I can put this up so you'll see it. You're gonna know right away. Uh, uh, hold on. Your background's messing it up, Greg. Yeah, put it against your shirt or something, and it might, and I might be able to see it. Oh Let's yeah, Spider Man. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got mine uh, right back here. Uh, this Big was little like, books. Yeah, this was the find of the day for me because it, <laughs> because of your show. Like I saw it and. I was laughing and it was making me think, but yeah, this is what I would run back into the house for. <laughs> I was trying to figure out who the artist was. I know, and it's not listed. I don't think it's a name artist. I think it's just an artist trying to emulate the style of like Ramita or Ross Andrew, so, sort of that era. It's really hard. I can't figure it out. And and David, I'll put this one. Up. David found a fantastic form. Oh. I think I had both of those when I was a kid. They're they're great. Like they're great in terms of like, it, you know what it does is it spotlights like um just how good the actual Marvel comics was. Like you know if anybody says that they're like you know dumb stuff for kids, you sort of pick up those little big books, and uh, you're like, oh, this is pretty dumb, and uh, it yeah. makes the uh, original comics look that much better. Totally would not have been on my radar if it wasn't for your show, but I absolutely love this thing, man. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's so fun, like, digging through comic book stores and finding weird, rare, nonsense things. You know, one of my local stores here uh, is called Atomic Comics. And the cool thing that they do is, and they started it during COVID, but um, they started doing a live claim sale once a week. As in, they'll put up a book, they'll talk about it a little bit, and then they'll finally reveal the price, which is like a bit of a discount from where they'd normally sell it. And whoever says the details of like the comic and the price and claim first gets it. Um, so it's not quite like bidding against each other. And I've gotten all sorts of cool, weird stuff like from them. Like I just have some of my oversized things over here. Um, Oh man, I've got more than I realized actually. Like, I just want to show off some of this since we're talking all sorts of cool, weird comics. Like, I love going for oversized things. You were just showing like a small thing, but you know, of course, getting like the uh, Superman, Spider Man team up, that, that was a cool find. Um, oh, the very first Marvel and DC crossover, they, they co published Wizard of Oz, an adaptation of the movie. Like sort of who cares, but it's it's just fun. And like, what else? Like you guys all like Kirby, I yeah. did. Oh, yeah. Or at least a bunch of you do. That's so good. I don't know how many of you have read the actual like 2001 comic that he made. Love it's it. So cool and weird. Yeah. It's it's so that was a, that was a really cool find. I mean, especially when you get to the psychedelic stuff towards the end. And like these weird, like he used pictures and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, the collage part of him, right? Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Or like finding weird things from from the UK, like 
Goblin magazine or like Goblin was like this three issue comic that like that's like Alan Davis though and Paul Neary like really early stuff by them I don't know so I love going to comic stores and supporting comic stores you never know what you'll find I have all sorts of cool weird stuff here for, that I got there but um oh there's a good one the history oh. of comics an incomplete Jim Steranko wanted to do something like I don't know three or four issues but he only did two he was gonna just oh wow yeah he just yeah. wrote it was like supposed to be oh my just a full telling of the history of comics and Steranko wrote and published this really weird cool bit of history yeah. does it, those are hard to find does it read well like does it read well uh it's stuff you kind of know now. I yeah. bet, like, I'll tell you this. Probably in the 60s and 70s, it would have been, like, really, really well-respected. But, like, I think a lot of that information has sort of been shared in other places at this point and distributed and disseminated. It reads okay. It's not badly written in any way. And, and, and the cool thing is, like, this devil spread cover that he, he did for it, which That's where he just sort of tried to put in every important character you know like look at that like look at his interpretation of red skull like you know he really didn't hide the fact that red skull's a nazi yeah wow well, i'm proud there it's <laughs> pretty cool to see like his interpretation of a bunch of dc characters that you wouldn't otherwise see steranko do yeah you know steranko has a history of like publishing uh fanzines just like you uh eli mm -hmm. so um in, in a lot of ways, he's like one of the first to, to really make fanzines a big thing. Most um, people don't you know, know that I also was a magician in my earlier career. And I are you serious? An escape artist? No. <laughs> but that'd be awesome, right? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be way. cool if I was true, though. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm naive enough that I started to buy into that. I don't <laughs> wow, dude. Mr. <laughs> Except for my political beliefs have... Yeah, not quite as racist. No. <laughs> is that a wig, Eli? Is that a what? Is that a wig? Uh, yeah, it is, yeah, actually, yeah. Can you, like, wiggle that a little <laughs> my helmet. Just give it a tug? Oh, oh, you have a black I mob respect paint. a lot of what Steranko did, and that I'll tell you that that was one of the hardest episodes, like, I did, because I still have some criticisms about him, right? But one thing I mentioned was like, you know, his sort of weird facade where he seems to have, he's, I say seems, he seems to have veneers and, 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 a, and a wig. I had a couple people like mad at me going, that is his real hair. And I go like, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Don't convince me. Don't, you just can't convince me. Taranko has a cult. There's a podcast that these two guys do. And it was after Gary Groth went on the cartoonist Cafe channel and told that Gary Groth story about yeah. him working for three months for Steranko, which is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. This this was like a two, three, it was like a three-hour podcast. And they kept going back to talking about Steranko. They just kept circling back. And Gary was like uncharacteristically patient and good with them. He never lost his cool. But you okay. can just tell that these guys were Steranko fans because they interviewed that Steranko as a guest, and it was like they were like oh, they were trying to do a hit job yeah but it was it was kind of like a hit job and it was like guys let it go <laughs> but but he has a cult and and yeah. it's like there's certain guys that have like a fan base that's not a fan base they just think like the guy is like walks on water yeah yeah i i guess you're right and you know I can't so, deny that, like, you know, he definitely helped evolve uh, comics, uh, you know, very sure. creative with his art. But, yeah, some of the some of the other stuff, like, attached to him, I just, you know, as a person, doesn't mean that I have to like him as a person. But I do admire his him as an artist. You know what? Sometimes it's, to make that differentiation. You know, there's a, there, that line. there's a famous historian, Lord Acton, who has a saying that said, um, he said that most great people are bad people. Hmm. And this point was, was like people can do great things, but they're not necessarily like the greatest human being. And sure. and and you and you see that like sure, like okay, you see that like in business, like Steve Jobs, brilliant visionary, but not the easiest guy to work with. Right. To say you nothing know. of like certain politicians that have like you know 
in, you know change the world like not always good people right exactly so, personal so I, I think sometimes people have that difficulty of saying this guy did like miles davis is my favorite musician of all time but cool. miles davis wasn't always the best person right <laughs> if you right. but 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 you can't you can't knock his influence on music so i think sometimes people have a separation an issue where they can't separate the two and yeah. you can appreciate what they did and acknowledge they did something great but maybe you're they're not perfect in every way and and, and you may not like them in every way yeah. but you can say but they're really so they did this and this is really awesome because he did I, influence I, comics I, I keep putting off like talking about robert crumb because like he's another one that like i admire his work but like maybe a little problematic as a person um i had a hard time when i did you know my uh look at cerebus i don't know C certain artists it's, are it's difficult to, so yeah, sometimes it's yeah it can be difficult i can see i want to be honest i want to be honest but i also don't want to like you know yeah sometimes i i don't always admire the person even though i admire some of the art right yeah. and, you know yeah i mean but that's a lot of artists are like that I think in today's age, like like especially now, because things are more, you know, you need to like, you have to have that ability to separate the two. How I handled like sim and oh. service was, I, I refused to buy the book new. I bought it. I would buy it used. You know what I mean? So it's. I've done that myself, Craig, on certain comics that like you know. Not a huge fan of most of the stuff Jeff Johns writes. I'm not trying to throw him under the bus or, or anything like that. I just, most of it, I don't like. I, he, he has done some good stuff on like JSA, but like, you know, for instance, I tried Green Lantern and, and it didn't work for me. And Doomsday Clock was this big event comic. And I was like, I'm not going to be buying that one new. When it's completely done, I'll buy the used copies from my comic store to support my comic store so that I could like give a review I was not reading that one new. I just didn't want to like it, it. It didn't speak to me. I think I think that's the safest answer for for us is like if there's someone out there that's gross and you're trying. Everyone's like saying you know separate the art from the. I just try to I'll just try to buy everything used. That's that's my answer. It's yeah, like, I think that that's yeah. like the, It's and it's so arbitrary in some ways, but at least it gives us uh, the ability to sleep at night. You know? yeah, <laughs> <the> voice right. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to hear that from other people, though. That the, the, like they, because that's what I've done. Yeah. So that's interesting. It's Halloween, and I'm getting my thriller on. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, yeah. Exactly. Another one there. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that's what he was getting at. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, we're getting down here to the end of the evening. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks for hanging out and you know asking great questions and chilling out and um let's definitely get um chris a copy of the makers because i think it's one of the best books coming out right now oh that'd be exciting it's very yeah it's an incredible incredible idea i love i love it hey but everybody's been drawing are we gonna like are, is everybody gonna show uh -huh. what they drew yeah we should, uh, i'll show what i drew yeah I'll show I'll I drew. all right let's do it Quick i want to see, see what people drew all right, I'll start us off here. Well, I'm I'm a little behind on my uh, Inktober's, so that's what I was doing in here. The, I did the other day's prompt was Grand Design, so I tried to do like Brower's cover, but put us the creators in there. So I got Ben Grant off there, Rick in the middle, Rocco, myself, and Brower's and Craig there. No, uh, you wow. Craig and Rocco definitely look like they're. Uh you know ready to throw down with the hulk himself that's <laughs> thanks yeah. dude rick and is then, pretty, 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 pretty buff there yeah, too rick's looking good. Good. and then i, uh, I would call had, those all flattering we had tezuka so i don't know him so well but i tried to not do astro boy or not do some of that other one did so this is big x i believe this is if you don't know tezuka like first of all there's a great biography about him that's a good comic Great um, to on to that. It's great. The Osamu Tezuka story. I recommend that. That's great. And, and then, That's like, um, if you get time, read stuff like Buddha and Phoenix as well. Word. Oh, yeah. Buddha, my friend did a series on that for his YouTube. I was following along a little bit. I don't know if you can see. They're going to have to hold this up again. 
I did Very this cool quick stuff. Ninja Turtle Grendel too. That's what I just been doing recently. Is just drawing random Grendels, like Batman Grendels, like a hell yeah, Grendel. Uh, nice. Some cat. Hell yeah. All right, let's let's continue. Uh, I'm gonna have to put mine up and share my screen because I can't show it. It's digital. Oh, um, let me change the uh, settings here. All right, you should be good. All right, hold on. Good idea, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Well, you're all drawing. I want to see. Yeah. I got something. There we go. There, oh, Tony. Yeah. Was that Tony? Yeah, oh. I got something. Okay, sweet. That's okay if you want to go ahead. Oh yeah, Greg. So uh, Eli, there, we have a we have this thing called Next Panel Press, Chris, and we got a bunch of guys that uh, contribute biweekly, like their own strips, and it's been going since I think February. Uh, wow. Rick, Rick and myself uh, came up with the idea, and Eli, and. Uh, so yeah, this is this is being dropped tomorrow. I'll shoot you a link to it so you can take a look through it. And, uh, I'd love that. Thank you. Uh, no problem. I like the uh, the the, the uh, sleep drool. That that's that's <laughs> a, a detail that adds to the verisimilitude of everything. Little details help ground a story. That's a good detail. Yeah. Nice, dude. All right, All right. Uh, Donde. Oh yeah, um, so I'm working on a lore book for one of my stories, and I'm um, trying to do like, kind of like, you know, like throughout like a history kind of deal. And I'm trying to go, you know, with, eat with the first few pages. I'm trying to go back to like the first pages are going to be like kind of like hieroglyphics. And I've just been kind of doing a lot of research and studying on hieroglyphics and. This is kind of what I came up with. Let me see if I can switch my camera around. Yeah, we got it. Oh, wow. Holy shit. He's an that's, exceptional that's Don is, Wow. Don is an exceptional artist, man. He's so good, dude. Legit. That's great. So, yeah, everybody's there's got homework. stuff in there that looks like, you know, uh, Aztec and Greek and uh, Mobius a little bit with, the fig with, that, with those big hats. Yeah. Right. It's a big, it's a it's a big combination of all of it, really. I wanted to draw him with a mechanical pencil, aren't you? Yeah. What what do you use? I'm curious. I love drawing I'm with mechanical. Using pencil. a Pentel. Yep. Five hundred. Yeah, that's a nice balanced pen pencil. Yeah, it's pretty good. I need to get some softer lead though, because I'm like scratching into all the pages <laughs> that I draw. But yeah. This is this is the original page that I first did. Oh my god, look at that. And I kind of just take it, like I kind of just take it and kind of like scan it and then like just redraw over it and keep drawing and drawing until I get it right. That is so gorgeous. Yeah, and I just added that to try to you know <clears throat> that's about it. Hell yeah, dude. That's more than just about it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it almost really looks impressive. like um his name the guy from the brain salad surgery cover or who also did uh stuff for alien and uh shit what's his Geiger? name oh are you yeah, talking Geiger. About... yeah 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 Geiger. yeah nice dude am i saying it right is it Geiger or is it i Geiger? think it's Geiger because i'm pretty sure Swedish it's pronounced hr Geiger. yeah, when yeah because uh, there was that documentary like yeah <laughs> uh he was in the uh like the um, the Dune documentary. Yes, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Joe oh, yeah, yeah. Dune. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so good. I think Paul F. Tompkins does him on Comedy Bang Bang with hilarious results. That I didn't know. I love Paul F. Tompkins and I love Comedy Bang Bang, uh, yeah, but I, I hadn't heard him do that character yet. Oh, shit. You want a good mechanical pencil? Look up yeah. uh, look up Rot Ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's a great one. They, they, they make a lot of nice tools. Yeah, they're oh, I love it. The balance on those is beautiful. I gave one to Browers when he was down. Yeah, no, you actually want to hear something like speaking on that, what, what buddy was bringing up there. If, you, if you're ever having a problem, first of all, in, in your page, uh, a good bristle is the best way to go, but like the lead you want to use, that's kind of your choice. Go 2H, man. 2H is really fucking favorable. Like, if you can erase it, you can put it down, it goes darker how much you put on it. 2H, best lead ever. Yeah, I generally uh, use a 2H too. Be working on Browers. Show, show them in. Yeah, let's see Browers. So, but also, so speaking of, uh, here, I'll show you um, 
this is actually the well craig was talking about this is this craig gave me this 170 dollar german thing <laughs> i don't know what the fuck dude wow. like i want to listen to this i hold it it holds right it holds different i don't know what the fuck's up with that no i agree and that's what i was trying to talk about like i've got a I don't have it up here, but there's a certain mechanical pencil that I love because it's like heavy and it's balanced well. Like it's it, there's a there's a weight to it. It's not light, and it and makes me just feel like I'm in control and I'm and I use my whole arm instead of that's, just like throwing from the wrist. That's what it is. But I'll show you two H lead. Um. So here's some two H lead. Oh dang! Wow! Holy shit! Nobody told me that you had time travel technology and you were taking us straight to 1993. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. Hawking, yeah, that's Hawking Dove. What's it for, Browers? Let them know. For our image, uh, or no, sorry, man. It's for our Rob Lapel Life in Extreme Comics, man. But there's a little overkill holding some chapel and stuff. <laughs> that's some 2H stuff, man. Do another layout here. But um, I'll show you another. Well, because Craig brought it up. So, New Mutants. Oh, uh, that. that was an early comic, too, that I love. Just, I'll just say that. Like, New Mutants was a big one for me when I was. Yeah, this is our take on uh, 87. You know, like, right when he got the gig, when he left that, go to this. Yeah. That's what he was given. And he threw cable in the mix of these fucking momos. You know? Yeah, it was like a werewolf great. girl, a Madonna girl, some guy who looked like George Michael, and chick leaving the team on a horse, and that was 87, you know? And he's like, I got to write this thing myself. And is that the Millennium Falcon in there? Yeah, yeah. I made Warlock. See how Warlock is like Oh, that. Warlock! Yeah, and uh, Sunspot's driving it. Right on. Yeah, man. So, Warlock can do anything. <laughs> As long as his self friends believe in him. Yeah. Well, that's some 2H. That, 2H, man. Hell yeah. Thanks, Brad. I, I got the Dixon Ticonderoga number one pencil. That's the high tech <laughs> shit that I'm working with. Respect. <laughs> and I've got the number one, uh, though. You're, not the number two. <laughs> I've got the pencil a and pen, pen a multicolored ballpoint pen wh which also comes with the pencil in these day and age so oh, oh. up in the oh. game the future the is upon us guys <laughs> really what i've been working on here yeah let's see tony this i think tony would page. holy shit oh, oh my god next, tony would be story. a good fit for your werewolf comic yeah. too chris yeah, oh my god that what i you, love that, you use to think on that? holy but, shit Beyond this the is, energy, this character I just is kind of a so brave with spotting your blacks. Yeah, man. Thank you. I oh, like that's the uh, so cool. This guy is kind of a uh, a, a like an extreme uh, version of Gary Gross, <laughs> you know, the, the, the the mean editor guy. So that's the story oh, I'm working on. That's awesome. Hell yeah, Tony. That is so cool. <laughs> Anybody else? There's Tim energy going on there. Anybody else brave? Uh, Dave, are you working on anything? Yeah, I was trying to draw. I was watching a little bit of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood this morning, so I was trying to draw a little bit of Rick Dalton as uh, from Bounty Law. It didn't really turn out anything like Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. It sort of turned into a cool cowboy guy. But uh, oh, my uh, cool. thanks. My 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 tool of choice lately is like. Uh, dying sharpie markers. I just really like the texture I get out of them, so I've been sort of hoarding them. Yeah, and uh, making. Oh, so you're intentionally using the sharpies that are dying. So you're intentionally. Yeah, you get sort of a dry brush look. Too, yeah, I yeah, yeah I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't let know. us see that again, like where it's like where you've like uh, faded it out and stuff like that, like the hat mm. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, it gives I'm you not good but I like uh, I like the texture. Like I said, I like playing around with those markers and just trying to get different looks out of them. So, you know, even if the drawing itself isn't what I was going for, I like that I managed to get some cool kind of. No, that is thing. cool because also like you, you not only boy, you're brave though because the texture is great, but you're still dealing with a pretty thick line and and like to 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 draw with that is kind of brave. <laughs> I don't always yeah, have well, the courage to do like that. Yeah, well, I've been doing like thin lines for so much, so long, and now I'm just trying to. 
expand the palette, I guess. But thanks. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, Rick Lopez. What you got on that light box or that? Yeah, we got iPad? Rick. We got Rick. Um, got... I'm Other than that this. killer vintage I'm... tea. I'm cleaning up this the scan of my uh, Cosmic Cat series. Oh my god! Oh my god. Jesus, dude, that is, that is some nice, fine detail work. That definitely is reminiscent of guys like Jeff Darrow that, like, you know, yes. just loaded up with lines. Thanks, dude. This will be ish, this will be the seventeenth strip. So yeah, sometime in February, I think, is when we started doing them, and then. It, it's gotten pretty big now. There was like three of us in the beginning. There's like a dozen of us now. So what if you're trying you to make a that? strip, Chris, if you're trying to make where, a strip, we got room for you. Oh, where yeah. Can you, where, where, That's where the next panel press as well. Uh, on Instagram at Next Panel Press, <clears throat> on Facebook at Next Panel Press, uh, Webtoons or Webtoon Next Panel Press. But yeah, like all of our future? stuff's on there. There's a bunch, there's a bunch more people on there. Right on. And more, more like, people coming. Like me. Rick, like me, is a is a, a big fan of the Kirby Crackle. <laughs> yeah. Well, the God, I like respect the Kirby Crackle. How, how cool is it? Like, how many other artists in comics have a technique named after them? Like, not yeah. that many. None. For and the great me. thing, the wonderful thing about it is it's such a versatile technique. Like, you can use it for so many yeah. different textures. It's amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's like just such a, you know, when you look at it, 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 it represents like energy, but it's like, how did he even come up but with it's that? Because no one drew energy like that before, really. Here's the thing that I love about Kirby Crackle is that you he Kirby has used it to both be fire and water. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and like, and Circles like are his space friends. and earth and yeah. power and draining of power. Listen, and, it's yeah. the only thing in that what if cartoon that I actually liked was the episode with Doctor Strange where it, it was all over the place. And I was like... Ultron used it last, in the second to last one too a bit. Well, yeah. So, I mean, but that's that's what I mean. It's the thing that... Spoilers, bro. In just that whole show. Very cool. Here's some... Uh, I got some... Uh, it's, it's pencil. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can turn the light up. Oh, uh, yeah. You were working on this oh, kind of recently, that. right? Speaking yeah, of some, like... Some uh, big time... Kirby, uh, Kirby tech. tech. Yep. Oh, you post that on the first day of Inktober in the yeah. group, right? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's it, I, I started this as as just as a um, kayfabe That's Tober true. thing, but then it turned into a, a splash page for a story I'm doing. So, yeah. That's very cool. Damn. That's Hell so yeah, cool. Tony. Don't burn it with your cigarette. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Any uh, final words, Craig? Again, thank you so much for all your work booking tonight, man. That was amazing. Anything oh, yeah. you want to say? In, in no, finality? just thanks. Thanks to both the guys that showed up. Uh, lo love Dave's work and Chris. You know, you know how I feel. Uh, keep doing what you guys are doing. I had a blast, guys. This was amazing. Yeah, yeah this thank was you all. For fun. Thanks for uh, having me on. Thank you, Chris. Absolutely, yeah. man. And uh, I think you meet so many people. It went live in the group, but I'll also upload it to YouTube uh, in the next few days. And um, you know, post your links in the in the um, uh, in the comments section, and then I'll add them to the YouTube once I put it up there. All right, y'all. And thank you so for much, Dave. Everyone, thank you so much, Chris. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Rick. Oh. Yeah. For everyone here at Comic Symposium and the Cartoonist Cafe Ringside Seats, I want to remind you to not only read more comics but be more comics. All right, y'all. Have a great rest of your night. Good night. Thanks, Eli. Good night, dude. <laughs> Good night, guys. Woo!